Okay, and I just want to warn you that uh, when I wrote this song, I was listening to The Cure a lot, so. Okay. I should leave the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> no, you need to get recorded me. All righty. It is Semen on Film, everybody. It is uh, my second pick. So uh, I had the 90s free for all, and I figured. Um, Throw a curveball of sorts at y'all. Little rom-com action. So we didn't, you know, try to sound too misogynistic or anything crazy like that. Since we have a, a lady in the room, as always. No, be as Sabrina. misogynistic as you wish. <laughs> I'll just... Yeah, She'll but... lecture us over a series of fucking messages on Messenger about... <laughs> don't worry. Don't right, worry. Right. You yeah. will be chastised properly. Sure, sure. Well, I, always, I always try to, to look out and... Try not to go too hard in the paint. But I picked a, uh, a good 90s Adam Sandler classic that is uh, The Wedding Singer. And I figured the only thing appropriate to open the show with is the uh, my <laughs> mediocre rendition of uh, the, not really the theme song, but the uh, main song of the movie, I guess you could call it. I'm in. Yeah. I want to make you smile whenever you stand. Carry you around when your arthritis is bad. <laughs> All I want to do is grow old with you. I'll get your medicine when your tummy aches. Give you fire when the furnace breaks. We could be so nice growing old with you. <clears throat> I'll miss you, kiss you. Oh, it's gone. <laughs> I uh, come well. when you are cold. <laughs> Need you, be you, even if you life. hold the remote control. Good job, Andy. You had some notes there. I didn't think you you had those notes. You look like a baritone, maybe. I mean, I have a good range. You know, I can sing uh, Don't Speak, Gwen Stefani's part, or, you know, I could... Uh, yeah, uh, I remember that. Uh, you did that at my house one night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was at least as good as Adam Sandler. Uh, um, you and Joe, you and Joe did, right? Yeah, Y'all yeah. sang Don't Speak or Foolish Games or some shit by Jewel. Uh, <laughs> Joe and Drew did Foolish Games. Oh. <laughs> Our touching moment. But yeah, me and Joe did uh, Don't Speak. Yeah. What about the word tummy? Can a man use the word tummy? No, he just did. So. In, in, in song only. <laughs> like if we're all going to. When go I'm out, talking to my cats. Yeah, yes. we're having a we're having a guy's night out, and somebody says, "Hey, I can't make it, man. I'm having a tummy ache." <laughs> Can you hang out with that guy anymore? <laughs> if he's is that under, how glued you are to your 16. ideals of masculinity. <laughs> your teenagers, maybe. If you're, uh, you know, over 21, probably not. Hey, did anybody uh, recast Leverett? <laughs> we'll find out later. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Leverett? Yeah. yeah our, our... Does anybody have a picture of Leverett for her? I, would... I, I meant to look this up because you guys brought it up in the chat and I never did. Yeah. I, the, the problem is we don't have like a shirtless photo of the man. <laughs> with the, the liver spots and shit that we saw uh so it's hard we can show you a picture of him like in a, in a cruise book but yeah it doesn't give the full effect i probably don't need it <laughs> yeah it's better inside joke terrible yeah <laughs> uh, right. yes so we watched the <laughs> yes, 1998 so. uh Adam Sandler vehicle 
known as Wedding Singer. <laughs> and I'll just uh, open it, you know, um, it's just some of the quick stats to knock him out of the way. In the year 98, when this movie came out, it finished 21st overall in box office releases. Oh, Jesus. Uh, made 80 million <laughs> with a budget of 18 million, which it made its opening week. Um, also, that year from Sandler was The Water Boy. <laughs> and uh, the top five movies that year were uh, Titanic, Armageddon, Saving Private Ryan, Something About Mary, and Water Boy. Mm. So. <laughs> Pretty sure I liked Water Boy better than this. Yeah, Yo, that it went. <laughs> And they were, <laughs> yeah. Well, then think about <laughs> yeah. Number eight that year was Godzilla, which is, is that the Matthew Broderick one? Probably. I think yeah, so. Matthew Broderick's yeah. not bankable. Um, if he's not making Ferris Bueller two, nobody's yeah. watching his shit. Yeah, but I Lethal Weapon four came out that Matthew year. Matthew Broderick in Godzilla. Yeah, I think that was another <laughs> him. Hank Azaria were in it. Yeah. Oh. They've made too many. Since we have to like, we're getting all the actors mixed up in the different King Kongs and Godzillas that they've made throughout the past thirty years. Just to uh, piggyback off of Godzilla, I hate the zany scientist trope. Like that shit bugs me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's weird. They're all zany. Uh, or the one that they used in uh, what was the bad the Green Lantern movie with Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> His head just kept growing and growing. You know, <laughs> like yeah. Sweaty head growing too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, very off-putting. But anyway, nobody, to this nobody movie. said anything. Yeah. Let's come back to uh, the wedding singer. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So that was that was 1998, and then in a nutshell. Um. But was this anybody's first time watching this movie? Of course um, not. No. This was my first time, and probably. At, at least, least 10 years to watch yeah. it from start to finish. No yeah, I haven't watched it in a while. Yeah. I only watched it the one time and never thought I was going to revisit <laughs> it. But here we are. <laughs> Living my nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> you know. I grow up. <laughs> oh, you know. I don't know. I think it still holds up, but we'll find out I'm as watching we get into it. Uh, I was like you know I, and i i'm i'm gonna be probably hypercritical on adam sandler any chance i can get sure like i just i i you, you know that i'm not a huge fan of this guy right uh this movie is actually pretty good in comparison to well i mean i think in in 1998 1998 yeah this i was is in high school prime, prime sandler movie. time yeah this I mean. is prime sandler and also his like love of making money I don't think had like surpassed his like want to be like maybe a household name or just make a good movie yeah. <laughs> because yeah, yeah. it's like shortly after this is when he was just like, you know what? Pay me $80 million. I'm going to hire my buddies and we're going to make a, a movie that absolutely nobody's going to like. But, but his kids will like it. Cause they started, I think somewhere right. along the line in an interview or something was like, I, I don't know, making movies for my kids or right. whatever. Right. You know. And I'm sure his kids asked for Hubie Halloween. So Yeah, or click two or something. <laughs> I did make about halfway through this movie, and then I realized that I had been watching uh, 51st Dates instead. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> now, uh, yeah. I, it, but, it, but it really is. It, like, I, I think it's a good Adam Sandler movie, and it holds up. Mm. I, they, that's my problem with Adam Sandler movies is that they – so just really, really stupid, and yeah. I just don't like them anymore. I'm not going to mm -hmm. name them out loud because I would just get dragged for it. But sure. the, I, I like this movie. I do, and I and I've been after watching it recently again. I watched it actually today, like an hour before I got on here again. Yeah, it's I like it. I think mm -hmm. it's 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 solid movie. Oh God. Yeah. Chris thoughts. Oh, Chris. My thoughts are, uh, of course, it's a solid movie. It has Adam Sandler in it. Um, Adam, you wanted a rom-com? You got one, buddy. This is it. This is the rom-com. Anything with Adam Sandler, Drew Barrymore, that should be your go-to for rom-coms. Uh, and I know Sabrina doesn't know anything about the 80s, so she didn't get half of the jokes. Because <laughs> she misses half of our jokes and our messages. 
Uh, <laughs> they're all about football and bullshit and like people I don't know because you were in the Navy with them. Well, we're all in the Navy. I'm about to be the most cynical you've ever. <laughs> my, uh, <laughs> my thoughts on this movie, we watched it a lot uh, back when it came out because we were in the, uh, we were decomming the USS John Rogers and we weren't allowed to live on the ship. So we all had to get apartments and my friend, Michael Lobo, fellow Steewiz tech mm-hmm. got an apartment. And uh, this was the movie that was out at the time. We were watching it over and over. And uh, a little bit later in the year, I guess she said Waterboy came out, which was uh, yeah. if you were to launch a movie into outer space to show other civilizations how great Earth was, you would put Waterboy and Wedding Singer in there. Yeah. I'm getting sure. this is, And <laughs> yeah, because look at the movies that made money that year. Titanic. Yeah. How disgusting of a movie was that? Yeah. Or, the only uh, thing true about that movie was uh, the ship sank. Yeah, or it's like I want to watch a movie. I know how it ends. Yeah, number six <laughs> that year was Eddie Murphy's Doctor Doolittle. So I mean, oh, yeah, God. see, some Jesus. people don't have good taste. It's I so, remember somewhere. that one. Yeah, it's horrible. <laughs> that was target. I was the target age for that. <laughs> In the movie, this movie here, solid jokes for the time period. Yeah, um, great cast. We were. Uh, is is anybody a great you know a big fan of Frank Severo like I am? <laughs> Anytime I see that guy on TV, yeah. I just laugh and I laugh and I laugh and I'm just like my my favorite part, of course, is Goodfellas when he's hanging in the meat truck dead, <laughs> and he has that afro frozen. Yeah, yeah, so, and I, yeah, yeah and it's really so perfect. Perm. Yeah, that's great. It's mm-hmm. So perfect. Great hair. Yeah. Anytime he talks, I laugh. But uh, this movie. Um, and like you said, Sandler does put his friends in a movie. Like, if I were making movies, who am I going to try to fucking cast? I want right. my fucking Navy buddies. <laughs> I don't want, I don't want some piece of shit actors who think, oh, this is my process. This is what I have to go through to make my character speak to the audience. I don't want that shit. I just want all of us in a room um, firing off all of the shit that we can, kind of like they do for grownups. And yeah. then they have to say stop, you know, because everybody's firing off a joke too fast. Yeah. Yeah. say stop let's put those in order like this you know yeah. i would rather do that and i commend him for only putting his friends and family and then you know what else he does he goes what hot woman can play my wife in this movie <laughs> yeah. not only did you know this kind of like launched his career to say okay this guy is going to be the most bankable movie star in movie history but he resurrected drew barrymore's career mm-hmm. with she was working at a coffee shop when he pitched this to her. Mm-hmm. So she's got her own fucking talk show now. Thank you, Adam Sandler. Yeah. And of course, that's why she agrees to do all the other rom-coms with him that we'll probably watch now that we know Adam <laughs> needs to go down that avenue of movies. Yeah. But yeah, I loved like, it. Yeah, it was because of movies like this and Waterboy and stuff like that that then when he signs his, I don't know, Two hundred million dollar Netflix deal or whatever nonsense it was, like you know. Well, aside from it being on Netflix, and you don't really need to advertise stuff per se on there. Like you didn't need to advertise any. Like you'll just somehow know that Sandler has a new movie coming out, and you'll check it out because we all grew up in his heyday of SNL and everything else, and he, you know, became a household name with well, movies like this. You know, that's another point that I love about Adam Sandler is that him, Chris Walk, Chris Rock and Chris Farley and uh, David Spade were not yeah. valued by Saturday Night Live. They were all fired. Adam Sandler has never had Lorne Michaels producing help on any of his movies. This is him. He's self-made. Yeah. So this isn't Lorne Michaels, uh, the Lorne Michaels machine mm-hmm. pushing out Saturday Night Live movies. Right. Yeah. This isn't yeah. Wayne's World or the ladies like Netflix, man or, Netflix you know. only gave him 200 million for his movie that's a I don't cut. know what it was I mean whatever but, uh, whatever the deal was it was something crazy but it was like you know he didn't you know again it's like uh, I was listening to I think it was on Kreischer's podcast or something that it was like think about it you know he did he got that huge deal and it's like he didn't have to advertise any of those things like you'll just somehow know that those movies are coming out and there's a 60% chance you're gonna check out at least 15 minutes of it 
Yeah, and it's like uh, a good sign of a movie. Like a good movie, you're gonna watch 15 minutes of it. Well, at yeah, least well, to check well, it out. I mean, if it's, yeah, if it's, it's good, good, you just yeah. keep it on, you know. And if not, yeah, yeah, then yeah. you turn it off. Because there's many people that shit on Adam Sandler. They say, "Oh, we don't fucking like him." He's made a lot of fucking money somehow. So who are yeah. these people? I, it's not cool to say that you like. Like it's cool to say that you hate Ben Affleck too. That's what's cool. Yeah. But the guy's a pretty good director and actor. But Adam Sandler was like, oh, I don't like no Adam Sandler crap. It's all corny bull crap. And yet yeah. here we are, $10 billion later, the most of any actor in history. And you're just like, well, who's watching the movies? Well, I know I am. And I he, watch Adam Sandler he shit. He dresses worse than Joe for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah. I watched Ridiculous 8. I don't know why, but it wasn't well, bad. I picked That's... on Joe <laughs> compared to all <laughs> these other Joe's movies. not wearing pants right now. <laughs> Uh, yeah, wearing basketball but, shorts? Uh, actually just a blanket. Is everybody yeah. wearing and basketball shorts in honor of? That would have been a good bit. I have Levi's on. <laughs> no, yeah. Oh, that's Real Midwestern pants. there. But uh, I guess Surf and Turf, what were your uh, initial thoughts or takes on this film before you, we get into you it? You can go first. <clears throat> I guess you're Surf and I'm Turf. <laughs> <laughs> um. I am. An... Somebody's top, somebody's bottom every time. Yeah. <laughs> somebody's going to be surf, somebody's going to be turf every night. Well, I guess majority of the time. I am an Adam Sandler <laughs> fan. I am not a rom-com fan. Um, yeah. I'll say straight off the bat, I didn't like this film. <laughs> but <laughs> but, but I'm going um, to focus on the good parts because there are good parts to uh, this movie. Sure. Um, what Adam Sandler does really well is how he glamorizes or glorifies the underdog, the outcast. Yeah, especially in, in this era. And, Again, with Waterboy and stuff like that. Yeah. And he always makes the outcasts and the, the underdogs the heroes in the end, which I, I, I'm I super into. Um, the I, I am judging this movie from this time period so like i was not into a lot of the jokes but like i said and in honor of chris giving train to busan a a fair score not because he hates zombie movies but be, he judged the movie as a whole i'm gonna judge this movie as a whole as well based on that time period and i like i do remember those jokes being funny a lot of those jokes be fun, being funny and stuff like that but um no uh but the my my true criticism is that I do not like rom-coms and I'm ju- I'm going to be harsh on this movie based on that it's a rom-com, but I am, I just want to put out that I am Adam Sandler fan. Uh, Sabrina. I did not really enjoy, enjoy this music. Like there, this movie, there were some um, fun parts for sure. Like it's definitely fun, but I, don't think it has rewatchability the way you guys seem to think it does. Yeah, I don't think it's uh, the jokes. They were one and done. Um, I do agree that Adam Sandler, what he's good at is he's good at the simple stuff and it reaches to a broad audience of people because everybody, like uh, Adam said, underdog, everybody's been an underdog at some point. And so I think that's why you're always willing to maybe watch an Adam Sandler film like one of these because it does it does touch a lot of people and it's broad enough like and nothing is very specific so you you can make it kind of relatable um but for me like the jokes don't hold mm-hmm. up um I feel like Adam Sandler just re like washes and repeats a lot of his jokes in all of his movies for the most <laughs> yeah, part definitely a, and a bit of that, you know. I find it very tiresome because <laughs> um y- you can it's super predictable and you know exactly where he's gonna go for he's gonna go for the easy joke like there's a really large woman eating cake like <laughs> that's not funny to me <laughs> like I see it every day <laughs> like he did it on purpose not because like yeah. He needs someone being eating cake in a messy way. He needs the fatter person eating the cake in the messy way. And they make fun of um, George as a trans person. And there's just like 
a lot of low ball jokes that low hanging fruit that he always grabs he just <laughs> always goes for it and it's just exhausting to me because <laughs> it's too easy and he's clearly an intelligent person and i he could probably make something genuinely funny and clever and original but he chooses not to <laughs> and um I find that infuriating. Also, <laughs> this is not a good rom-com. I don't think either because like rom-coms are already unrealistic. <laughs> like for the most part, they're a little bit like out there and a little bit unrealistic. And what happens in this film is just so over the top that it's hard to get into it. Like there's a couple scenes, which and when we get to them, I'll probably lose my mind. Sure. Over them. <laughs> but <laughs> Yeah. But like, it's just so unrealistic that it, it takes me out of the movie completely. And uh, I don't think it's um, like, it's fair to judge things based on when they were made. But yeah. also I think this movie group, I've, every time we've watched a movie, I'm like, is this something I would watch again? Is this something I would recommend? And this is probably not one of those things. So but they're, not to say that there, it wasn't, they didn't have some good points. Sure. But overall, this is probably the most cynical you'll ever, <laughs> you have ever seen me at. And I, I apologize in advance. <laughs> I wanted to bring up a point here. Uh, this movie came out in 1998. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it takes place in 1985. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the, I mean, it's 13 years. You know, True. and I remember watching this in 98 and I mean, I guess I wasn't in the prime of my life as a, you know, a three-year-old in 1985. Right. But, uh, <clears throat> as wild as we were, the, like <laughs> the world was like so much different, so, so different than in 1985 versus 1998 that if they made one now, like in 2002 or 2022, yeah. Yeah. it was 13 years ago. Yeah. It'd be like, oh, yeah, 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 still yeah. Be having like iPhones and yeah you know jay-z would still be relevant <laughs> right. you know like there would be like yeah there'd be like no no difference no difference at all in the whole uh thing you know ps4 would still be a thing i mean i didn't like it when i watched it then so <laughs> i just <laughs> i just don't then. think that's if this was not a movie for me <laughs> the soundtrack might have been okay huh <clears throat> yeah Good soundtrack, I think. So yeah, a lot of great terrible. 80s and it's wedding fun music. Classes. It's not again, also not my taste in music. <laughs> <laughs> it was like the good 80s songs. It was good right? wedding singer music for sure. Like yeah. the music made sense for the movie, but I'm oh, never gonna like listen to that. I'm glad you brought that up. I did have that in a note here. I wanted to ask Andy as a resident musician here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh what kind of money does a wedding singer <laughs> make? Like well, for a gig. I don't, I don't, you know, I in, this, in the movie, he says he's getting sixty dollars, and so I did the math, and uh, sixty dollars if he did two a week, uh, and then you know, and then did he wouldn't make any money. He'd make like like make like fifteen hundred dollars after he paid all the band members and stuff. Well, I'm thinking immediately. he's I'm thinking his cut was sixty. Yeah, that's what I, how you I know because I mean you figure yeah, you're not um, getting a whole band for sixty dollars for a wedding. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know what nineteen eighty five that was possible. Yeah, well, you know, nineteen eighty five money is probably basement. You know, so yeah, and his brother's basement or whatever. You know, it was a I mean, sweet like, basement. I don't know. I love that. I was like, I wish I had a fucking room like Not that. Bad bigger for than my house. Yeah. I pay four hundred thousand dollars for this little piece of shit, which would be called charming or quaint if I were to put it on the market. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So nowadays, you think it's like what, like three grand gets you a band? Well, see. Here's the, that's the other interesting thing. And no. kind of the way I approached um, was my in... notes and everything for this movie was to uh, just like social commentary and, and discussions of uh, changes in the times or, you know, weddings and other things in general. So um, like the first thing I wrote down was, you know, the wedding reception is moved from, you know, here we have the wedding singer band and stuff like that, the wedding band or whatever to the dj um and also counter you know to that effect whether it's intentional or not there's also seems to be you know considerably less dancing too i would say 
at weddings. I don't know how many weddings or what weddings you guys have been to recently. Um, but just kind of that shift has happened. And like, I remember when I was like a somewhere between 10 and 12, I remember when my mom's brother got married, like we still had, there was a band at that wedding reception. We had the, the Harry paint review or whatever. And they, you know, played all kinds of different music. Did you say Harry taint? No. (laughs) What did you say? Harry faint, I believe was the band. Uh It was the Harry faint review, Hmm. you know, or something to that effect. But I remember it had like, you know, he had the, uh, I was like, I'm just gonna let it go. (laughs) I mean, some people might've called him that. I don't know. (laughs) Yeah. Um, that's yeah. that low hanging fruit joke we were yeah, yeah. discussing. <laughs> right. You know, but um, you know, yeah, I mean, interesting though how that's shifted. And then you kind of look, you know, back in the 80s and and you know, in the day, like, you know, live music was a lot more prevalent, welcome to whatever else, you know, you think back to um the prom scene. And back to the future, you know, in the fifties or anything like that. And, you know, they have a band playing all night, you know, whereas now Prama was DJ, you know, asshole, whatever his fucking name is with his shitty DJ name, you know, spinning MP3s. Cause we don't even need <laughs> to carry records or CDs anymore, you know, DJ iPod or dj spotify you know you set up a <laughs> student body really voted a uh, playlist or something ridiculous um you know and like i said less dancing for whatever various reasons like you think that's I think that people get more into a band pumping out hits and make me want to get up and shake than right. i do when i hear pre-recorded music right i did write down uh adam sandler movies always have killer soundtracks I mean, go listen to the grown up songs in there if you like 70s rock. Uh, 20 years before music. Sabrina's time. Um, Sabrina, you know who Van Halen is? Yes. Do you know who the lead singers for Van Halen were? Uh, no, not off the top of my head. So you, there's a joke you didn't get. Then. Probably. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I wanted to ask you guys. And Adam, and Adam and Sabrina, you guys are the only ones married here. Yeah. Um, Joe's in some weird dungeon love affair with some dude here in Kansas. <laughs> I don't know what's going on, but <laughs> um, I want to know more about that. Big wedding versus small wedding. Which one would you want? Well, we eloped to Las Vegas, so right, which, uh, <laughs> you know, you I'll anything? bring that up. So later. you were the Glenn of the group, Adam. Let's just do Vegas. No, that was a did you let her sit in no, by the window was, when you it flew? Was us together. We we no, he likes the window. We bought a house instead of getting married. Yeah. We could have had a wedding and stuff, but we bought a house. I told my daughter that. I said, do not have a wedding. Do not have a big wedding. Don't waste all this money on a wedding. Because you know how many people, like we're in the Navy, how many people we saw have a wedding and pay all this money and they're divorced in three years <laughs> and they're still paying for that wedding. Right. Yeah. If you get married. I said, early. save that money, go on a vacation. Take mm-hmm. use it for your honeymoon. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I would never hire a band or a DJ or anything like that. And uh, um, Sabrina also acknowledges my social anxiety, so she yeah. <laughs> she lets me have the window seat. Dude, uh, I, I'm with you. I haven't been diagnosed with anything, but I'm always having to be around my kids' hockey team. Mm-hmm. And they're always, and the worst place for me to be is getting him dressed before practice or games with all those other fucking kids around. I, I, I want to jab knives into each of them. Mm-hmm. Kind of like I wanted to jab a knife into those two little kids that played the his nephews. Yeah. I was just like, yeah. oh, somebody's got to take those kids out. I can't They're take having this. a mental breakdown. <laughs> yeah, that little, that little blonde kid I wrote. Uh, yeah. I, I can typically. Let, I'm not letting a, I'm not letting a little kid like that looks like that call me a bitch. Yeah. Um, I, I thought they'd shrunken Drew Barrymore somehow into a little kid again. <laughs> and Pulled she played that from ET. Yeah. yeah. She has a tiny baby doll face. Oh, it was weird. Yeah. I was like, I know he, they, they, people would call him precocious, I think is the word they call little idiots that look like that. But I was right. just like, this is kind of creepy to me. I don't like it. Mm-hmm. He could have been a Chucky doll, you know? Yeah. I don't know. Her character needed some help in this movie for sure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. 
So um, let's see what then you know we get on with the. Uh, let's get into the movie, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so you know that was the the opening. We get the the wedding band thing, and you know Adam Sandler's the the man of the evening. He's the guy making it happen. He's you know the MC, the the wedding band leader, the singer, and everything else, and uh, you know making a good night for everybody on the, you know, for the happy couple and all that kind of stuff, which is great. Um, and then kind of one of the next thing, uh, we have that scene when we kind of first start meeting Drew Barrymore's character and um, she's in the kitchen or whatever, talking with the cook and all that. And then, you know, her friend uh, Holly's mentioning, you know, how she got in good with the cook and whatever, but I was thinking like, what were some of your favorite wedding meals? Hmm. You know, weddings hmm. you've been to, what was a, a memorable meal you've had? I haven't been to many weddings. Um, yeah, I, don't, I, I don't get invited to places for some reason. Um, I do I do like a ton of Mexican weddings and like, yeah. it's almost like, it's like really good, like Chipotle type platters. So there's like a yeah. lot of really good barbacoa and stuff like that. And so, like, so I always I dig wedding meals. <laughs> That's cool. I think I would like that because, you know, like this crap here, or, you know, the people, I don't know why people think prime rib is so great. I don't. It's all, it's all right. Have, but yeah, like, so they many have weddings are, Oh, just yeah. pour the au jus on it. Or you can have fish. I don't want fucking Classic. fish. Classic. If you need to add gravy to make it taste good, it's not good. <laughs> no. If I want fish, it better be Captain D's. You know, uh, I'm not eating some fucking, <laughs> some weird fresh caught uh, Alaskan cod when I'm at a wedding in Kansas for Joe, you know? <laughs> yeah, right. I think my favorite wedding food was, uh, my friends did like a brunch and there was like an omelet really? line. And so I did- Are you a... shitting me? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just thinking, like I was at a friend's <laughs> wedding la uh, last <laughs> weekend. And uh, then we were talking like the food truck or whatever it was. They, they didn't have a food truck, but like the caterers or whatever had a truck yeah. that they brought. And like it said, they also do breakfast. And then like uh, the table I was at, we started talking. I'm like, that's what I'm going to, that's what I want to do at my wedding is like, <laughs> uh, you know, we have omelet bar, eggs to order, and like, you know, yeah, breakfast for a, the wedding reception. I, think I had an omelet golden. made to order and some mimosas. And I was like, this is the, this is the dream right here. I would be doing this on a Sunday anyway. So <laughs> bring yeah. it <laughs> yeah. that would be Sweet. yeah I, I just don't like the the regular like oh this is what is perceived as fancy and since it's no. a wedding no. I'm like, when oh, no. Adam and I we were gonna have a um I was gonna have one of my friends he does la latinx barbecue type stuff and I was just gonna have him bring a bunch of like fa family style dishes over to our house and have a little party in our backyard but yeah. I never wanted it to commit to more than anything than like finger foods basically like fuck a sit-down meal Sure. I want people yeah. dancing and moving and hanging out. Right. What what surf say? or turf here. Uh, the breakfast uh, wedding meal is fantastic. Yeah. I, I've done that, but uh, in order, uh, probably the best in, in lieu of cake, uh, I went to a wedding one time and they had bought like artisan donuts. Ooh. And had That's like a tower of those. And so you could basically go up there and you could get like one with like cereal on it or, you know, like nuts and honey or something, you know, yeah. like all, all ra any random ass topic you could possibly think of. And right. so that was pretty good. I mean, you know, they're pre made donuts. Yeah. And cupcakes you know? have definitely filled in some of that space. Though I had a friend, uh, that wedding that I went to in, Can in uh, Casey, Missouri, there when I didn't give you enough heads up to catch up with you joe uh instead of cake they had a, a cheese tower or whatever like they had a bunch of cheeses which was yeah. kind of cool. <laughs> as was someone like nice who's and light. as someone who's like worked in hotels and in the food service industry and hospitality for a really long time i just already knew what worked for large groups and what didn't so yeah. i have like very realistic um expectations of like what goes well and what doesn't and then yeah. I've seen some really cool things like I worked for this company and we, they had a food truck and they served um latka press sandwiches and that kind of thing and yeah. and then there's people who just hire food trucks there's yeah. um 
these people that just wanted like carnival food one time like what? it can be whatever you want it to be and that's what i tell every like anybody who's ever yeah. asked me any advice on that type of shit like what do we serve at our i'm like what are your favorite foods get it on the plate <laughs> like, yeah it doesn't matter my, my friends had a candy bar that was pretty cool mm -hmm. just jars and jars of different kinds of sweets <laughs> yeah why not yeah. yeah so yeah I mean, it's, it's definitely but you know the other interesting thing was though you know it's always kind of like the prime rib or the fish or something like so many weddings are you know do you want the the chicken or fish or prime rib chicken fish you know there's so many cliche you know 60 percent of the weddings i've been to is always kind of the same two or three options and then you get the people that think outside the box which is nice too yeah i mean so we also do a lot of barbecue out here too. Seems like everybody yeah, has somebody that has like a big smoker or something. In right. It. Yeah. So we do that, but yeah, well, that can be fun. You know, definitely when you have a, a good, the good setting and everything else. So. <sighs> Not when you're wearing white. Yeah. <laughs> Not for you guys. No pulled pork. Yeah. <laughs> Just Carolina no style. It's vinegar. You know, it won't, <laughs> won't Get leave as much here. of a stain. There you go. <laughs> um. You know, then of course, uh, you know, while uh, Adam Sandler goes out to take care of the uh, the underage family member that gets a little too much uh, of his first taste of alcohol, um, you know, they let the band let uh, George take over the band and <laughs> do a um, boy George uh, back to back, which I was like. You know, great from, scene, clever. That was clever. Great scene and very clever. I enjoyed that scene. Yeah, but also it was like, I was thinking about it. Like, is that a small like nod to Blues Brothers when they played the country western bar? Did Raw? I, don't <laughs> I uh, so I saw Sabrina said they were making fun of him, but Alexis Arquette is uh, you got Adam Sandler casted a trans uh gender person in his movie yeah and then that was probably alexis arquette's idea so i'll be part of the band and i only do boy george boy george was uh yeah. kind of a uh a weird thing in the 80s with the culture club because people were actually asking is it, is it a guy or a girl um if we ever watch commando arnold schwarzenegger <laughs> talks about him at the beginning I was, but uh yeah. it was, was a real not... thing but um I uh, I used to enjoy the Culture Club music, and of course that That's made me gay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, according to the guys wearing Judas Priest shirts, um, <laughs> like if yeah. you like Culture Club, you're gay. And <laughs> Judas Priest Which shirts, is the on, ultimate like, like yeah, oxen. Oh, all right, sorts. tough guys. <laughs> but, that was the part uh, I didn't like. I didn't mind that he was cast as or uh, that Alexis Arquette was cast or anything like that, and I appreciate that Sandler put him put them in there but the part that was annoying to me was that alexis was there just as a gimmick i, no. I just i just didn't like no, it because the point was to pick on him yeah i know that wasn't the point i don't think at all well that's all that yeah. the, the in the, the 80s the audience did no in the 80s when people had these big fashion say madonna for one every girl started dressing like madonna and there were groups of people who all dressed like Boy George. Yeah. Well, that was like his thing. And, you know, I'm going to be the Boy George character. But, you know, how many women run around with lace gloves on cut off and their hair with a big ass black bow in it and shit like that? It's all the same. Nah, it's more of a fashion thing back then. I don't think they were making fun of him. Yeah. The fat lady. Plus, if you do the same thing. In the 80s, but he made the movie in the late 90s. And it was. Right. So you make it period revel relevant. Um, if I make a movie about the 20s, I'm not going to have black people and white people drinking from the same fountain. Hey, you guys got to separate here. What are you doing? Right. So. Yeah, whatever Whatever fits the, the time period. And I think, you know, I think more people were turning on, on George just because he did the same song probably yeah. four or five times in a row. If I, <laughs> that that if made I hear me the laugh. Same song, <laughs> yeah, that, you know? That's what, yeah, I don't think, he, the Sabrina, I don't think he was making fun of him. Um. But yeah. I thought it was funny when he came out and said, hey, Alan Covert comes out. And this is like the, you know, you first realized who Alan Covert was. You didn't realize he was the homeless dude 
and happy Gilmore, right. you know, and uh, he's just like, hey, man, you got to get back and they're turning on George. <laughs> but, you know, like right before that is whenever they gave the best man speech. And that's when we met Steve Buscemi. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that was funny. He starts going and everybody's got that person at the wedding who's telling a story that shouldn't be told. Yeah. Because yeah. he's too drunk. Like, Have you guys experienced that? The only person in the crowd at that wedding that approved of George and his song was Steve Buscemi's character. So that's what makes me think <laughs> he was in there for a joke, obviously. <laughs> Ooh, I like her. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you can't deny, like, the only reason why I was there was so that, like, of course, the the shitty brother is going to be attracted to George. I Steve see. Buscemi, though. I mean, you're, you're winning if Steve yeah. Buscemi is attracted to you. But, you know, Alexis Arquette is known for two movies. Yeah. This one and Pulp Fiction. You know, yeah. she was the dude that shot at, uh, you know, say Samuel L. and, uh, Vincent Vega with the goddamn hand cannon. You know? <laughs> I don't remember that. Well, he was a guy then. You know, this one is when I guess he switched. But yeah, it's uh, it's like I always say, like with a transgender, like uh, Elliot Page. I thought she had won an Oscar when she was a woman, and I was thinking that'd be good. You'd be like the first person to win an Oscar as a woman and a man. <laughs> It'd be cool. But yeah, the uh, Steve Buscemi's character in this one was good. And that's when he was helping out the uh, the kid throw up. And Steve yeah. Buscemi tried to get him and he had to separate him. <laughs> 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 and, uh, you know, Steve Buscemi, like we say, that's a good cameo. But it was kind of like his start of being in Adam Sandler movies. Him and, you know, he was in Billy Madison for that. What an awesome cameo. And then this one, yeah. another great cameo. Yeah, and then... Uh... Not in Waterboy, but then Mr. Deeds and probably a couple others. Wait, was he in was he in Waterboy at all? I don't think who so. Who are the two redneck fans? That was uh, Clint Howard and who and uh that's probably Alan Alan Covert, I think. Probably. Yeah. I'd have to look it up, but yeah. I just remember Rob Schneider. <laughs> and then, yeah, Rob Schneider was the You can do it. Yeah. You can oh, do yeah. it, cameo. Yeah, and that was, you know, when he did that in Waterboy. This is back when Steve like, Buscemi was like the weird looking guy in Hollywood that everyone saw in movies, but you didn't know who he was. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't a household name yet. You know, he, he was just like that, that one guy, like, you know, that weird squirrely guy. Yeah. And people knew who you were talking about. When did Big Lebowski come out? It was around this, it was probably, the 90s, right? Yeah, it was probably a couple of years ago. Irrelevant. I mean, 96. <laughs> Oh, yeah, so people kind of knew who he was. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I did some of his, and then his Tarantino yeah. work later. Uh, yeah, he was he was up and I mean, he wasn't even up and coming. He was just a guy that you know. He, he was a not really a character actor, but you know, a lot of people didn't know his name. This is before yeah. the days of Nucky or whatever his name was. Yeah, Nucky. <clears throat> yeah, so then, um, you know, so that was the first wedding of of many throughout the movie, and then. Um, you know, he does, he saves this, the best man speech. And you see how Adam Sandler's very, um, you know, pro love and, and, and kind of romantic ideals and everything else. Cause he's about to get married next week to, uh, you know, Linda and he's all uh, excited for that. And then here comes um, one of the Hollywood tropes that I hate the most <laughs> is that Hollywood loves to ruin a wedding. They love to break up a wedding. So here we have uh, Adam Sandler, you know, hanging out on the altar. Well, not really the altar because it's an outdoor wedding. It looks very nice, but uh, <laughs> he just gets uh, left cold up there. And then eventually, uh, you know, gets word that Linda's not coming. And, you know, he begins his, uh, his fall into chaos as, you know, could happen given that kind of uh, crushing moment in one's life. Um, I don't know, any thoughts on how Hollywood loves to ruin perfectly good weddings, whether it's in, in, you know, in the name of love or just to create drama and conflict. Another reason why not to have a big wedding. What if you spend all that money on that wedding <laughs> and she doesn't show up? Uh, somebody's dying. Yeah. 
somebody's getting that money back really quick. Could this movie be done without it? Probably, but it would have been way more like I think it. Yeah, it's it's it more that. crushing to be left at the altar than to just break yeah, up. Yeah, than just like oh, he's he's a guy with a golden heart and he's all mm-hmm. alone and depressed in his basement, yeah. or is he well, a guy with a golden heart and he's like just been dumped? Like right. his last name was Hart in the movie, and he's Robbie Hart, not to be confused with Bobby Hart, who we all served with. Yes. Or Hart, Hart, uh, Jimmy Hart, the mouth of the South. Yeah. Right. <laughs> or the Hart Foundation. Yeah. <laughs> Andy looks like Jim the Anvil. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I think it's needed, but because it led to a couple of uh it led to the next scene where he's all alone that she finally shows up to uh talk to him and explain why. Yeah. Which what which is one yeah. of my favorite parts of the movie. So yeah, I, I enjoyed. Yeah, I was like, you know, it's a quick scene. Um, I think that's that wedding also movie. led. Yeah, yeah, I think that way. I think that one was needed to set up the actual wedding at the end. Sure, kind of helped that as well. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, kind of, you know, then we I mean, move it along. You know, we start to see him falling apart. He just starts phoning it in at the next <laughs> wedding. <laughs> You know, like, celebrate. <laughs> you know, it's it's almost you know it's probably on par with the uh, drunken Ron Swan or not Ron um, Ron Burgundy and stuff from Anchorman, like <laughs> at the bar. You know, scaring super, all the regulars, man. <laughs> super depressed. Robbie Hart, yeah. wedding singer, is really funny. Yeah, it is. Yeah. 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 I liked I liked that better than him being so perfect and good at his job. I was like, whatever. <laughs> I was like, this is that scene is that whole scene there's pretty funny and then the, the song and stuff. And I'm not really into a whole lot of songs in my movies, and this one was pushing it. Uh sure. Well, then because it could it's well, something because a musical, and you know, I can't be doing musicals, man. That's right, not really right. my thing. I'm sure it's, it's tough. Uh, I will bookmark that. <laughs> yeah. I like the Lion King. <laughs> I like Popeye, which is me. Oh, uh, you're watching Hamilton for the free for all. Uh, <laughs> you guys wait until I get a free for all. Uh, okay. <laughs> you're throwing me off. <laughs> back on track. That's back on the track. idea. Uh, we need to take out some wedges for Sabrina's next pick. Keep I, in I mind. You just you said guys are gonna like my next pick. I promise. Well, I, I liked your last pick. Let's, it was a great let's get pick. back to the wedding scene. <laughs> Yeah, but as you're I, saying, I actually, where was I going? I don't know. You were well. You were starting to say something. No, just so about the soundtrack on. and musicals. The musicals, yeah, yeah. The music went too far. Oh, oh, uh, you know, but that whole scene, even the, even the, the the little you know love stinks. You know, yeah, yeah, which was, was great. It was which funny. Was, I thought, yeah. I thought it was kind of funny. And then you know the the dad being like, I shell out all this friggin' cash, and this guy's gonna sit up here and ruin my this. this. He's like, well, I have a microphone, and you don't. <laughs> yeah, you know, it, uh, I, I, I went to a wedding one time, and uh, I kid you not, this is a true story. Uh, so, <laughs> we're sitting, me and my buddies are sitting there drinking these cheap beers and stuff out of this like, big old like tub, Yeah, and uh, there's a wedding DJ and he's playing. He's got he's got songs that he has to play that the that the groom right, and bride the, have picked. And he also sure. has you know his own schedule and stuff to be able to fill the three hours or however long. Yeah. Uh, and he would take some requests every now and again. Well, the end of the the night comes along, and the last song of the night is getting gonna, is supposed to be getting played, which is picked by the groom and the and the father of the the bride. Oh no no no! It wasn't even the father of the bride. It was this other gal that was there. Her dad wanted to dance with her, the daughter. The da- he wanted to do a dad-daughter dance right. to uh, Garth Brooks' The Dance. And the DJ was like, no, man. Like, I got to play the, the, it's the last song of the night, and it's bride and groom, and then, this is, yeah. then I'm done. I'm packing up. And yeah, he yeah. just didn't take no for an answer, and he punched him. Oh, really? And then, <laughs> it, and dude, it escalated to, yeah. I mean, and the whole time thinking, for the dance, <laughs> I, mean, Garth, right. I, mean, I, I celebrate yeah. Garth Brooks' entire album. He's great, you know, '90s sure. country, you know, Superman. Yeah, exactly. But, 
you're going to fight something at a <laughs> wedding DJ. So, I mean, I have seen some crazy stuff like that. You know, that's just sure. one too many Chardonnays at the, at the, at, you know, a farm wedding. Yeah. You know, things can get out of control at the reception, yeah. but I have seen that happen. And yeah. The, yeah, the DJ was actually being really cool about like, the like, no, I can't. Everything I can't. else. Yeah. It's a whole thing here, man. Yeah. It's, it's, wow. What? There's always that, that person, you know, especially when you're a DJ, you know, like at least I guess kind of the, the out that the band always has in that respect is we don't know how to play that song, whatever you could say that. Whereas you're a DJ, all you have to do is pull it up on whatever, you know, you either have the CD or you don't, which still kind of got you around it in the 90s and early 2000s. And now it's like, well, you just pull it up on Spotify or whatever. Here, I got it on my phone, you know, like some stupid jackassery, <laughs> you know. I, uh, you know, Kevin Bacon says he makes it a point that if he goes to a wedding, he pays the DJ not to play Footloose. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> as you should <laughs> it's a great idea i've been to karaoke right. bars where they're like we will not do these songs like mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> and karaoke there's just like out. you know like sweet caroline they're like no we're just not doing it ever again like yeah <laughs> we're tired i agree with that i won't go to boston times. red Sox games because of that fucking horrible shit <laughs> cliche Nobody likes again. that song oh. Or at weddings, what are the uh, you say the cliche foods and stuff? What about the dances? Uh, everybody wants to do the electric slide and the chicken dance. Chicken dance. You gotta have a chicken uh, dance. I, I would stand by the chicken dance as a good wedding thing, you know. Otherwise, it, it could, could be on the rocks. Stays. You never know. There better be slide. fried chicken as a, a meal. The electric slide, I don't care because that's <laughs> the only line dance I've ever learned. So. Uh, yeah. I don't remember that. What that's called? Me neither. That's the, the Cupid um, Shuffle. Yeah, Cupid Shuffle. That one's yeah. popular because that's, you know, everybody knows that one. Everybody knows the... Uh, thank you leg. And you know, the Macarena. Like, the Macarena people do. Arena. They do uh, the Cha-Cha Slide, you know, which was yeah, great yeah, from yeah. the early, late 90s, early 2000s. Those um, are good to just get people out of their seats. Right. And you, then have you, to can do the, like... you have to warm up the, the dance floor sometimes with the, the line dances because then like grandma and gets up out. there because everybody knows it and stuff and then some people are out there um you know once you're uh, out there you're stuck sometimes so sometimes yeah it gets it gets tricky uh andy i uh i would i think we skipped over a very important scene mm -hmm. to set up his failed wedding maybe and i was you know we'll see he was on. uh to show how great of a person robbie hart is and that he's all heart with a golden mm -hmm. heart He's teaching this old woman, Rosie, to sing oh, at yeah, her that's... 50th wedding anniversary. And taking and, meatballs uh, for payment. But they're, yeah, taking they're meatballs for payment. choice meatballs, though. They're yeah. good. They fucking meatballs. hated the meatball scene. It, um, that's one of the things that, like, um, unnecessary. Like, I would woman. accept it, but, like, putting it in his hand, I was like, that's too far. And then they're clapping with it. I was like, no. <laughs> Nope. But it's like, not funny. It's not a meatball scene. Like, I believe um, you that you're a good enough guy to take meatballs as payment, yeah. but not that good enough. That's that's the that's my major hang up, and then also one of my biggest like favorite things about Adam Sandler movies is that he does something so stupid like that 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 that, that, that to me falls flat. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. and it's then you great, have but it's then you have something that. else that he'll randomly toss in a movie, and I. I off the top of my head on this movie, I can't name. It. I guarantee there's one that just is has nothing to do with the movie, and it's just some weird little scene that, yeah. he's, that he thought was funny at the time, and then it hits really well yeah. with me, and I'm like, "You son of a bitch!" <laughs> like I know that that's not funny. It's not the first one wasn't funny, but then you snuck this one in. Yeah, and I, yeah. yeah. He does things I, because he can, not because it makes any sense. It, it, yeah. it, absolutely, that's what it is. That's exactly um, what it is. It drives me exactly, freaking yeah, yeah. bananas. It makes me angry. Well, <laughs> the the good part about this scene is when Rosie is talking to him about his, uh, is he ready for the wedding night? I, I was just going to bring that up, the, the wildly inappropriate do you have any questions? grandma. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any questions? She's like, well, I wasn't a virgin. She was like, eight eight men, eight that was men. 200 when adjusted for inflation. <laughs> like, yeah. She's that's like 200 today. So it's like inflation. Yeah. Like, oh, Which is no, reminiscent of the, uh, the Billy Madison, like, 
with Peter Pants is cool down Miles Davis. Yeah. <laughs> and all that other a, a, an old lady doing something really weird, like, oh, she's so old and crazy. Look at her. Yeah. Ah, where Peter Pants, ah, meatballs. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> and then she's doing rapper's delight. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Bring it back home. So that was oh, uh jeez. Yeah. Um so then you know, as as Robbie's in his descent into uh, depression and madness, um, as Julia is, uh, you know, getting wedding plans together, and she had to uh, have Robbie play the wedding. He plays the uh, the love ballad for Linda that he wrote, <laughs> oh, and yeah. then I was thinking, yeah. um, you know, so then I was thinking uh, when you compare that song to you know the one i played in the beginning here that grow old with you like um you know being a musician i have a different view on things but like you think better songs come out of like love or like heartbreak heroin from an artist you know um it's love whatever whatever heroin heroin emulates that that's where the best songs come from heroin i mean that because you is that because you're living in seattle um technically heartbreak is because of love so they're both because yeah. of love like i don't think they they separate like right well i was going in the sense that you know the opposite of love is indifference and that you know it doesn't always well there's an optimism yeah. and a pessimism yeah. going on yeah. for sure yeah, you say that, you know. <laughs> some people write from pain some people write from joy but you know lionel richie's yeah. made a career off of love so yeah that's the uh, yeah. I think it's up to the person. Like, what are what are they inspired by? What's uh, in the, love? Is, see, that's is it rumors like a breakup album, or like sometimes yeah. it's just like how people deal with things. Yeah, like really. sometimes you only write poetry when you're sad because yeah. that's how you therapize yourself. Probably, probably uh, heartbreak because more people have been heartbroken than truly, truly in love. love. Sure. Well, that's the weird thing also, is like, that um, that you talk about optimism. People have been married three, eight times, you know, because <laughs> yeah. there's that optimism, but they're always getting hurt. Maybe, maybe it's you know. like, it's more acceptable and easier to be outspoken and share your love and joy and those kinds of good things that the art happens very um, personally and privately when it's a sad or um, a tragedy or something like well, that. It depends. That I mean, what, half of Taylor Swift's catalog is based on <laughs> For failed relationships oh yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah but i mean yeah. like a lot of Such people think of like i don't want to burden other people with my like i don't want to like just be a whiny like sad right. nobody wants a Debbie downer kind of thing but to all of my time, friends so yeah. they write it down and they make music or they paint <clears throat> and that kind of thing um to yeah get it out. i don't want to sit here and fucking listen to adele cry about how somebody has mistreated her for three fucking albums it's like, do you have anything good in your life? Can you talk about that once? Right. And yeah, Taylor Swift, it just got to a point where you're like, all right, got it. I think you're just dating dudes to write songs now. Yeah. <laughs> like, she's never been one about me. It works. <laughs> the, she, she like, throws out some bangers. That's catchy. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, you know. Nobody's punched her in the stomach yet in one of her relationships. You know, I'm waiting for that line. <laughs> All <to get> right. <laughs> okay. Take yeah. us back to the movie. <laughs> yeah, just the movie. Um, so that you know, and amongst the wedding planning and everything else, and since um, Surf and Turf were the the elopers, um, you know, not that you guys did it to be cliche or anything, but like, you know, in today's day and age, is the Vegas eloping thing is that still kind of cliche or is it like or i mean it, it is booming down there well yeah <laughs> people are getting married all the time whether it's yeah like you, know, you show up at the we went to the courthouse morning of and got a license and then six hours later we got married it was they got a whole system yeah i don't think right. it's a cliche anymore like okay you know, like in vegas they got like a like the wedding chapels down there they're like hey They'll almost tell you, hey, this is the address to the courthouse. This is how much you're going to pay at the courthouse. Yeah. The courthouse the is going to take you yeah. here. We'll <laughs> pick you up there. We'll yeah. bring you to the chapel. We'll knock this thing out. And then you could be on your way to a divorce in it's, no time. Yeah, exactly. You know. It's pretty uh, It's pretty legit. 
Sure. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's definitely. I mean, it's cheesy. Streamlined, and it's yeah. you get like a you get a souvenir <laughs> marriage license that with like dice in the background and shit. Like, right. So we get like a souvenir oh. marriage license for Las Vegas, and then, and then we get like the one. actual certified state of Nevada thing going on. No Wayne Newton or Elvis. Elvis. Oh, yeah. uh, you can get married in the chapel that Elvis got married in and all that kind of stuff. It's just extra money. You can have Elvis marry you for an extra hundred dollars if you're yeah. really interested in it. But the real Elvis? No, clearly. How do you know? He's still could he could still be alive. Nobody knows. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh I don't think it I don't think it's a cliche thing at all. I think it'd be cliche if you lived on the West Coast. And it was just a quick jump over there. But like, if you live in, say, that's what we did. We live so on the live West Coast. In Vail, like Kansas or something. You know. Yeah. Is it? Is it really? Uh, that? I mean, I figured if it would be like you know, if you're like L.A. to to Vegas. What's L.A. to Vegas? Hour, they like they made a two-hour drive. Um, or six hours. Well, like like Sabrina said, it's it's quick. They have a process, and it's like, hey, let's just knock this out. Let's not haggle because you know what? I had to go through like. Uh, getting blood tests and all this shit done in Georgia and getting our medical stuff Wait, you get, they have like that rule about before sure yeah relative hmm. well, who cares if what? we both have AIDS um <laughs> we just want to get married what's it matter if we're both if we have diseases no, I don't understand that I think she's about a cousin's law you've got to be a certain degree removed by DNA in order to get married no not in Georgia um <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so that's like, why they made those laws. think it though. is West Virginia. Come on. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, this is. Uh, I guess this is where uh, you see him and uh, Julia falling, or they're falling for each other as they Wait, go through all this. Uh, by the way, they known each other for like less than <laughs> two weeks, and she's invited him to go do like pick out her wedding shit with her. Hey. And this whole entire process of them picking out, planning this wedding, getting to know each other is about three months, by the way. Like, I, I was tracking it. It's like three months of planning a, a wedding town, together. Though, so, I mean, like, um, there's a, I think a South, Park, party. South Park summed it up. All you need is the montage, and it brings everything together. This, them <laughs> getting it, it to know each to other sense. was a montage. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, which, speaking of the montage... <laughs> Cake tasting, that's the best part of wedding planning, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, hands down. That's, that's, you know. um, you're falling into an Adam Sandler cliche, Andy, when you say that. Until you, well, you, know. until you get to the troll at the end of the line, you got to feed cake to. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. There's that. But For just some in odd general, reason. they're like, the cake tasting is, you know, I always offer that service. I'm willing to help anybody with <laughs> cake tasting <laughs> portion of their wedding planning if oh. they so deem it, you know. Um, they just cut up a piece of cake for you to eat, huh? Yeah, yeah. Try them I was off, really grossed out by everybody just like putting food in each other's mouths. No, Those 85 you're, you're, germs didn't even exist. Yeah, yeah exactly. you're like me now. Every time I see people talking too close in a movie, I'm just like, they just don't care. That <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like food specific. Like, I would, like, you know how, like, it's romantic when, like, no, somebody feeds gross. food? I fucking hate that shit. Like, <laughs> Get your um, fork away from my face. You know what? I'll, have, I'll I'll have sex with a woman, but I will not let her put food in my mouth where her fingers touch my lips. I'm like, no, stop this, stop. This is fucking disgusting. Oh, so this one time at work, I, I had like some frosting on my finger or something, and I was like, and I was like, oh, this stuff is delicious. And my coworker Bree just reached over finger. and like licked my fin- licked the frosting off my finger, and I was like. I don't know how to handle this right now. So I just froze and walked away. I was like, nope. Yeah. Quit your job. You should have filmed that and put it on a website. Yeah. It was great. Uh, there's, a, there's there's cake licking um, fetishes the out there. Oh. There's a, this girl that does like bread face and all she does is like buy like giant loaves of bread and different kinds of gluten things basically. And she just eats them, but she's wearing a bikini. And she doesn't even really eat. She's just kind of like smashing it on her face and making a mess. And it's apparently a big thing. So the yeah. writing singer. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah back, um, back, back after to- the cake, um, you know, then we get to what, like the night on the town, the double date of sorts with uh, Holly and Julia and Glenn and, and Robbie. 
And is there a more eighties car than the De than the DeLorean? I mean, like, how do we let well, people know that this takes place in the eighties? Someone drives a DeLorean. Like there was no other car that anybody ever owned other than the DeLorean. Also to show, to show how that much you money had you money. Have. Yeah, exactly. Dang it. Now I have a tangent and I just <laughs> go, go for ahead. it. Everyone else is doing it. I was I was driving to one of my job sites the other day and I took this back road and there's a, a DeLorean specific repair shop that I drove by and they just had DeLoreans in the driveway. Oh yeah, it's pretty cool. That's cool. It's uh there's got to be a lot of DeLoreans there because that was their thing. They just didn't start. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it was actually the end joke in that movie Driven about John DeLorean yeah. where he gave the the dude that testified against him a DeLorean as a gift and then he got in the car and it didn't start. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Would driving yeah. one now be cool? It is a, a weird nostalgic thing because, like, if you have the DeLorean, you're ultimately going the Back to the Future route. Yeah, you're trying yeah. to be, you're trying to be ironic. If I think if you do it, yeah, that too. But you know, like, you're cool because you're vintage or retro at that point. Yeah, like, um, so Adam, was, the wedding singer is a hub, and our, our tangents are the spokes from that hub. Yeah, it's such a great movie. It is like just shooting stars coming off of that hub. Yeah. Exactly. I don't know if you guys but can yeah, see the, it uh, in his face when he gets frustrated, but I can um, feel it next to him. <laughs> <laughs> Sabrina, yeah. Sabrina, did you watch Miami Vice at all? No. Why? Because <laughs> you're, you're going to realize how coming. ridiculous, how ridiculous, again, about the age you started dressing. People started dressing like this. No, years. that's all, oh, I, yeah. all uh, I imagined as soon as you said Miami Vice was like a white linen suit. And I was just, yeah, Bleh. it was weird. It was a lot of pastel muscle shirts. From yeah. Donald For no reason. No yeah. socks. Yeah. You know, and the only thing I can think of is, you know, people dress, you know, Glenn, there he is with his little five o'clock shadow. <laughs> and, uh, so asking for ridiculous drinks at his party like an alabama slammer when's the last time any of you have drinking an alabama slammer you know? i think i've ever drank it i don't even I'm and i know all of you hate this being in the navy the high five guy yeah um, <laughs> you saw it on the mess deck oh yeah oh yeah high five and they would <laughs> high five each other and he was like what the fuck is going on here yeah right they nailed that ridiculous dude mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. It was, and uh, then that's uh, how you know he's in the '80s. He's wearing his <clears throat> Don Johnson shit, and uh, yep. I mean, yeah, we could have we could have went the Fiero route or something, you know. <laughs> it was yeah. the, we always yeah, have to the go the DeLorean. Were definitely, th yeah. that's how I knew what was going yeah. on. Yeah, it's always Miami Vice for sure. Um, so then Robbie, uh, you know, as things are starting to culminate of sorts, like. Robbie decides he needs to get a, a real job and start making good money. Um, I've never seen a bank like that ever anywhere. <laughs> Has anyone ever seen a bank that looked anything remotely like this bank? That's Every like Hollywood those, bank is that bank. Where, that's like a bank? classic, like, like on a, in a New York city setting, like, I think and it runs just like. because it's pretty still. But it's like you made Grand Central Station a bank. Like what the hell? Ernest goes to jail, or yeah, Ernest goes to jail. That was the kind of bank he worked in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'll pick that one. Yeah. Where, where's where's <laughs> these banks? Like I've been to banks in, in several states, and you know, even overseas, any of these banks we've been to, I've never seen a bank that open of a floor plan or anything. The, <laughs> the part of that scene that bothers me was that he was like, "I'm just gonna like the next day after I find out I need to be a um a, I need to financial make money, provider, yeah, then." I'm going to go to a bank with absolutely zero resume and tell them that I need a job and expect to get one somehow. Also, yeah. if I harass the person, clearly that's how you get a job. Sure. <laughs> um, that was based, it was based off of a Saturday Night Live skit that Kevin Nealon did. Yeah. Uh, somebody wanted to come in and just get money because they wanted it. Yeah. <laughs> what was the loan for? Nothing. I just yeah. need money in <laughs> my life. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was oh, funny, but arms. like yeah. also, I, I, just the timeline of this entire movie drove was crazy. Like, <laughs> uh, I will add that anytime I see Kevin Nealon, though, I know that I'm. It's a good gonna have a good time. Yeah, oh, yeah. I just I, I just really find him to be funny, and I'm yeah. glad that Adam Sandler has managed to keep him in the, uh, in the giving him movies and tiny roles all the time. <clears throat> yeah. Honest CDs as well, but you know, Kevin Nealon, um, 
he was the choice to play Sam Malone in Cheers. That would have oh, been really? great. Yeah. Well, he didn't really funny. Yeah. He's not as good looking as uh as Ted Danson, yeah. Ted but, Danson. Yeah. It's not classically Danson. handsome, but right. yeah. Uh <laughs> Have we left something out when it comes to their love? Are they they're falling in love because she looked like she was in love after she got through puke and getting in the Delorean with that uh well, yeah. hammer I banging. I mean, I think the only other thing, you know, really left, you know, because we're pretty near the end of the movie more or less. But um, and, and you know, and I guess it's less applicable now in today's modern age. Is you know the taking the last name happens less frequently. I guess I don't know, like. Yeah, I'll for as long as I'll live, I'll always remember my name is gonna be Julia Gulia. And like <laughs> that's a horrible decision. Like you have to get out of that immediately. <laughs> like, you have but, to change a name somewhere. They have to change yeah. your first name or or not get married to that guy. <laughs> yeah. You don't take his name. Yeah. yeah, you don't take his name. Julia, so. since his movie's come out. Everybody says that joke to him. I guarantee. It. I know I have a thousand oh. times to a thousand Julias, and I'll do yeah. it a thousand more. Right? <laughs> yeah. You can't be stopped. I have like two things. First of all, I did change my name to Adams. Um, right. Did and... you sit there at the like a couple of days before, like I'm Sabrina Herrera? Yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah. To, you're like, yeah, that works. All right, we're it. good. We're good. But we can to, do this. To piggyback. <laughs> Wait, I wasn't done with my thought. Uh, okay. Yes. Like, go on. It it was it has taken a lot of people in my age group and even older than me, like women are like, oh, you changed your name? Like they're more surprised that I went the step to change my name rather than take a, it's no longer a, a thing anymore. But there mm -hmm. is a scene that I think we really needed to address, okay. which was the the practice, the like how are you gonna kiss? Oh, at the right. Altar? The, the kiss. Right. That, the the sudden yeah, the where like the board. obvious scenario is for the two single unattached people to like practice kissing in front of her. Right. And if you're engaged to be married and your cousin is all like, why don't you kiss your best buddy here? The wedding and planner, figure yeah. figure out how that feels. Like, this. Right. Well, she was the, she had to judge it. She can't <laughs> visually judge it by doing it, <laughs> you know, you which is a horrible, it's a horrible argument. I, I saw was sparks like, fly. Ridiculous, I saw sparks. It's a ridiculous plot device. Happened. Well, yeah. obviously there were sparks, and that was the intention of it. But yeah. I was like, they could have, they they didn't need that. This is yeah. just awful. But what is that more ridiculous, or is it more ridiculous that Holly thought she could get that kiss after the date from Robbie? No, <laughs> Holly she, could I mean, have she, gotten she, that she kiss from her from him. Right, but she like she kind of got it, but it even on the screen you could tell it wasn't there wasn't the sparks, but she you know felt like it was great. I don't know, it was kind of weird. It was so interesting. Like you thought you were going to recreate that moment, but you know way on this planet, yeah, exactly. it would be okay for the bride to be to practice <laughs> kissing on some other dude, no <laughs> matter how you want to whatever mental gymnastics you have to do <laughs> that to was, believe that like, that's okay it's yeah. less we'll realistic you, than meatball slapping like, <laughs> i mean okay uh, you know like if i'll you're tell willing you this, to do that, but, but what it did do what it did give us what it did give us was 1998 mtv movie awards it won us best kiss as a trip and it was a very good kiss it was it broke back mountain but that was take ten they years later. They could have had their good kiss like in a in a more typical rom com but way. I where, agree like, that one of them like, they bump I... each other's heads or they're helping her oh, up oh, oh. or you know something mouth to mouth me too. somehow. Yeah, yeah. No, it's so just many like, ways to do it. Oh, just practice on Robbie, the just... Jewish wedding singer. Like we're not even trying. They weren't even trying. Uh, yeah. I agree I, uh... that it was that 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 the 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 setup to the kiss was. So not forced. realistic it, it, not even realistic at all yeah it's, it's ridiculous but but i am i'm happy they did it right yeah. great plot device yeah for sure well it was a and terrible also plot what it gave us, <laughs> also <laughs> what also point. what it gave us culturally yeah. it gave us the kiss dude yeah then uh then you yeah. guys are missing out Church on the time. whole that you're yeah. you're missing out we on the most ridiculous part um 
the most ridiculous part is that Christine Taylor is like the hottest slut that you've ever seen. She's sluts super aren't hot. that hot. Yeah. You know, she's not sluts you aren't that she's hot. married to Ben, ben Stiller. Stiller. And yeah. it pisses me off because she's so freaking pretty. <laughs> Ben and uh, was a stud too, though, from like five now, to four. I think he was, he was a male model, right? <laughs> no, he was yeah, a, he was a, he's, he's known totally for a few pretty. poses. Ben, um, ben Stiller did a good job at in Dodgeball that like disgusts <laughs> me that they're married. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's uh, yeah, it, it's, it's just it so uh, much better that they, when you find that out, man. Yeah. Yeah. Compare, compare her to the slut in Christine. Yeah, I was gonna say, right? you know. <laughs> She dressed better than the slut in Christine. Yeah. You know? And she Both actually did way sluttier things than the slut in Christine. <laughs> yeah, right. she Said was all ways. about her, like, let's have a one-night stand, let's do this thing. Wham, yeah. bam. All you have to do is come on and up. It, the, the, the running joke throughout the entire movie, like, every time, like, you know, like, they had a chance to, like, dig at her for being a slut, they always did. Yeah. Like, when Glenn, wait, who, who, who kissed who? He's like, oh, she kissed Robbie. And, like, who, who hasn't? hasn't? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. She also thinks the guy that that makes the donuts is sexy, and Robbie's like, he is kind of funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. You know. Uh, yeah. Obviously, we. Well, this is what that's shortly before we see our our shipmate Leverett, I guess, really, in the yeah. plot of the movie. So. Yeah. It's the um. Not so great bar fight, you know. I enjoyed the bar. <laughs> Again, another '80s cliche: people dressing bar. like the most famous people. We got Boy George, you know. You got Madonna, you got Don Johnson. Now you got Michael Jackson. And he's trying to teach Leverett how to do a moonwalk. <laughs> Trendsetters. Uh, oh, man, you when know, that old man puts on that jacket. <laughs> he looks so man, funny. That man, yeah. he's he's known for playing like. Usually homeless people or hobos and stuff in yeah. movies, you know. It's, you know, it's his look. The bar yeah. drum, uh, good. Yeah, it's a. Uh, that was because after he didn't get, he got his failed bank loan. Yeah. She was there to give him a gift, and uh, that's where the little breakup happened, where they weren't friends anymore after what yeah. you say two weeks, Sabrina. Um, three, well, three they went through a lot of emotions. This is three months roller- and like five days before their wedding. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, He's like, I am an idiot, you know, and then he goes and gets drunk at the bar and uh, leads to them, you know, kind of realizing how a piece of crap uh, Glenn is and it's where Leverett takes over. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know who they're, who's Leverett is. He used to be is, stronger, I mean, you know. It's, it's old man. Thing. The old Leverett. man is Leverett? That's who you guys are comparing him to? <laughs> okay. Yes. Thank you. Sorry. Same body. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, Joe? Is our cat over there? <laughs> you hear that? I just the saw you look like, up like the dog's like running across the fucking living room floor. I can hear uh, him up there. I'm about to start hitting with that's how, that's how I look when my cat goes across. I'm like, is my uh, cat over there? <laughs> <laughs> well, plus too, like on my screen, Joe's below Adam and so, so uh, it's like something was going on. He's like the, he's I'm looking up at the cat over there. And, yeah, I was like yeah. He said, is the cat over there? And you're looking up. So I'm like, wait a is minute, this is getting really there? surreal. <laughs> Are these guys cutting a bit right now? Are you yeah. in our basement, Joe? Uh, speaking, yeah, yeah. speaking of which, speaking of which, watch the Hollywood Squares uh, tribute to uh, Gilbert Goffrey. They're fucking hilarious. Oh, that goes on YouTube? Yeah. yeah. Okay, I don't know if it was like a documentary or something. Oh, no, no. They just threw out all his clips from Hollywood Squares and yeah. Super funny guy, and and when you saw all his all his jokes on Hollywood Squares, you, you really get an appreciation of him. Oh. Uh, not to sound too shitty, but I was just saying the other day, like the only real good thing I think of about Gilbert Gottfried's death is the fact that like all I'm seeing now online and everything else are just Gilbert Gottfried clips, oh. and <laughs> and just be, and just him out of control. Oh you know? yeah, yeah, it's good crazy. stuff. Yeah. yeah, it's a shame more of that didn't happen as much when Don Rickles passed because he was another equally outrageous and like uh, yeah yeah we, I really wish that yeah Don, Don Rickles <laughs> would have had a li- little more uh, clout but yeah. I imagine a lot of it had to do with the fact that you know Gilbert Godfrey was, was able to be yeah. on so many mediums yeah where Don Rickles was you know 
of the time back really, then. really old days when all this new shit yeah. started coming out. It was right. like anyway, back to the film. Uh, yeah, <laughs> back to the film. Then I guess, um, <laughs> speaking of ridiculous scenes and, and plot devices, Robbie comes home beyond blown out of his mind, and then Linda shows up and he's like, oh, right, whatever, <laughs> kind of like there's not a scenario where that really is okay like i don't care how drunk you are like you totally left me high and dry on her wedding like you can just turn around and get out of here because you're ridiculous well he was so drunk too like that i mean at that point he could probably press rape charges (laughs) nowadays yeah i mean (laughs) men can't really do that though when they're drunk That's the problem with the law. So no, it, this was that. just a like, this was just a fun part of the movie that set up the Van Halen joke. Right. right. Yeah. That was. <laughs> but he's. Yeah. I mean, he's so wasted. He's blackout wasted. He's not going to remember this. He, that that he was raped. Like. <laughs> well, it was. Tell you what? Nothing happened. But yeah, I don't think anything happened. It, yeah. Yeah, she said nothing happened. But um, had something happened? Yes. But, you know, he was kind of, uh, when he woke up in the morning, he, uh, like what Andy said, you know, this ain't happening. Mm -hmm. He left me high and dry. You can deal with me being a wedding singer. And he like, you know. Yeah, you can, oh, you can, yeah, you can handle it. You'll settle for me. Like, Funny story. Adam landed me with that joke because when we first originally started dating, I did actually wear a Red Hot Chili Peppers t-shirt of his. (laughs) And he was like, "No, they're gonna break up. Take that off." Adam sounds like Jinx. And uh, you know, Jinx the band, and they're gonna break up. <laughs> I will always remember that, and I was earnestly sad and terrified. Like <laughs> <laughs> the uh, well, and Burn Hot Chili Peppers. I mean, haven't they broken up a few times? You know, John Frusciante leaves. They More make a shitty that. album. He comes back. They make but a great album. That was not because of me, though. Like no, that was before. No. Me. That we know. <laughs> Does we one band member leaving constitute as a breakup? <laughs> no. Yeah. Andy? Yes. In well, this I mean, case, yes. Um, in Van Halen's case, yes. Because <clears throat> there is a, a vast difference between, you know, Van Halen and Van Hagar, which is also demonstrated <laughs> there in is, he, they the left 90s classic airheads. The sake of animosity. There was animosity between them. Yeah. Yeah. And this, uh, 1985 is the year they broke up. But David Lee Roth, not a not a singer. Sammy Hagar is the better singer, and I love Van Hagar. Yeah, um, Van Halen Sammy kind of. Still... Gets... That's the joke you were upset Wait. I was gonna miss. No, it was a good joke, and then your <laughs> your future husband here used it on you, so it must have resonated. So it yeah. still <laughs> it still holds up to this day. Yeah. And you said he landed you with it. I knew that they. That's weird. I mean, the but... wedding singer joke. <laughs> made you fall in love with this man so i don't it's know not... why you're trashing the movie you don't you wear that, another man's just... t-shirt that, yeah, you're not already recorded. in love with them <laughs> just saying like red hot chili pepper rewind a little bit on this movie though yeah yes. there's, yes. A, there's a really mm-hmm. important part uh that that i thought was one of my favorite parts of the movie oh. um let it go the john so, lovitz cameo Adam Sandler is the wedding singer the whole movie's talked about, but yeah. when he gets his heart broken at but he he quits. Yeah. Like like for the most well, well nobody's gonna hire him. He's yeah, he's a he love, a- he's a heartbroken wedding singer. He's worthless. <laughs> yeah. And uh Drew Barrymore is planning her wedding, and so she needs a new wedding singer. And John Lovitz is the guy to come in and fill those shoes, and this guy so is nuts. He is so good. I, I love John Lovitz. Like after after watching uh, this, I decide that I, I need to watch High School High again, which I know is terrible. Oh yeah, <laughs> so it, it's coming on this month all the time. Oh yeah, I just uh, read that just John Lovitz us... reprised his role in The Goldbergs. Oh nice, as this wedding singer. Yeah, character? as this wedding singer. Oh geez, I, the I, Goldbergs. I, I would probably watch that. The Goldbergs did a wedding singer episode where they infused the scenes from the movie into the oh. show. Oh, okay. I haven't gotten to that one yet. Oh. Almost. Uh, um, you do get you do get one of those Adam Sandler moments though during this time. Uh, 
Adam Sandler sings his really depressing song. Yeah, the Linda song, yeah. The Linda song when he's in love and then he's out of love and it's a crazy sync and also a great, hilarious song. Uh, but then the camera pans over and John Lovitz is there. Yeah. He's losing his mind. His mind. Yeah. And reaping the benefits. <laughs> <laughs> he like disappears slow, into the shadows. The yeah. slow villainy grin with the eyes just widening. For no reason. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that's one that's one of those things where I'm like, I'm in all of a sudden, like, like, damn it, Adam Sandler with your like nonsensical tiny scene that you were like, Yeah, I'll quit this movie right now if this isn't in here. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm just right, realizing right, figure- that. All of my, my favorite parts of this movie had nothing to do with Adam Sandler or Drew Barrymore. Like, it was <laughs> everybody else I enjoyed. <laughs> well, yeah. Adam, so I, I, guys, I just you... wanted to rewind to that and also because, uh, you know, kids out there watching this show, maybe never seen this movie, maybe never seen John Lovitz, but you should. Yeah. You should, watch <laughs> you should check him out. Find check him out. Uh, yeah. John Lovitz has great cameos in every Adam yeah. Sandler movie, along with Kevin Nealon. Yeah. You know, that's the thing. There's Everybody the pervert that. and little Nicky. <laughs> <laughs> Acting. So good. I, love yeah. I, dude, I love that guy. Yeah. All right. Sorry. Back to um, back to the film. Yeah, I mean, you know, as far as you know, and then we have, you know, obviously they the, well, that's another okay, one more, one last crazy bit. We we're going to get married tomorrow, but let's just run to Vegas today. <laughs> <laughs> There's money. The wedding is happening tomorrow. Like, what <laughs> is everybody else going to do? All their deposits. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's cool. He bought that seven hundred dollars CD for player. Their fucking yeah. uh, wedding. Right. So this is the reason. Um, I'm against any destination weddings. You invite me to a <laughs> wedding where I have to travel. Go you better fuck fucking yourself. be there. <laughs> You're not even getting a gift. Like <laughs> my presence, my presence you is your present. Yeah. Um, I'm coming in there to eat your like. Uh, I think the most I'll go for a destination wedding is from here, maybe Los Angeles. <laughs> That's two hours by car. Um, if you want me to fly Eight somewhere to traffic, watch you get yeah. married. My sister got married, and she's like, are you going to be able to come? I said, no, I'll just go to your next one. <laughs> and she's like, oh, okay, fuck off. And I was like, I'm not. And, and, and another thing I hate can't about. can't imagine you as a, as a brother. It sounds oh, terrible. Imagine her. <laughs> Husband, <laughs> father, uh, leader. If, if you met my family, you would be like, oh, Chris has to be this way. He had to survive. <laughs> this is this is Listen all... to his, 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 his uh, G.I. Joe podcast. Yeah, and so, I'm uh, uh, I'm the one. tame one, really. If you meet my yeah. sisters, holy shit. <laughs> Talk about a mouth where, like, their husbands are afraid of them. They're like, they're, you know, your sisters are really mean to me, you know. In that case, so, I'm Were the they always guy. like that? I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're the youngest, so they're like, I guess it's a, yeah. they had to learn to talk shit as well. But uh, destination weddings, I hate. I'm not. I'm not going to do that. And uh, this other thing that has come up lately, because this was all in the Ridgefield Banquet Hall. Everybody had yeah. their weddings, you know. Um, this whole barn wedding thing, where everybody dresses <laughs> like the poor people from Titanic, you know, wear suspenders <laughs> and shit, and, and no, that's. I hate I'm that too. It. They want me to wear a fucking newsboy hat. I'm not doing it. Oh, can you go and go to this place and get fitted? We got. To, we're going to get you. Give us your size. We're going to have your costume ready when you get here. I'm not wearing a costume to your wedding. I'm going to wear a, a suit. That's it. Yeah. My suit. I have a few hanging in the closet because I had to interview for jobs once in my life. But yeah, that's it, Joe. You're at. You're low. Do people do that at weddings? Do they dress up in like old timey outfits? Yeah, it's a thing now. That it's barn weddings. They dress up in those. Yeah. You know, with fucking suspenders and their newsboy hats and all that. And the girls have their, I don't know, maybe cowboy boots or something. Yeah, you get weird theme weddings going sometimes, depending. Well, but, I, uh, I, was in a, I was a bridesmaid for a wedding where I was supposed to wear like a pretty dress and it would come to like my knees and then I would wear um cowgirl boots, cowboy boots. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, Sabrina, But it was just like question. country chic is what it was. Yes. 
It's what every girl wears to a Tim McGraw concert, that Mm -hmm. little white lacy dress with brown cowboy boots and a jean jacket. Yeah. Um, (laughs) It's a whole fashion. Yeah. Um, Andy just brought up the scene. He's talking about, oh, let's go now. She wakes Glenn up. (laughs) Um, When she woke Glenn up after the, uh, his drunken night out with the other women, Sabrina, who has a nicer ass Glenn in the uh, tiger underwear or Adam? (laughs) <laughs> i don't even remember glenn's ass so I'm she ran in there down. and she slapped that luscious grade a usda beef. beef yeah yeah <laughs> yeah she slapped it, it glenn, i remember the slapping but it, it didn't yeah. leave an impression on me at all so definitely so adam. adam yeah i thought it was a flat ass what i thought it was a flat ass okay oh, pancake well, adam booty. doesn't have much ass so <laughs> If you want to see my butt, subscribe to our Patreon. <laughs> yeah. Get on our Fourth only coming. fans. <laughs> right. Surf and turf. He's got a lean build. <laughs> yeah. So this leads to uh, him chasing her down, right? In the airport. Yeah, yeah. What are the chances? And, like, you know, but granted, there's probably not a lot of flights. I was going to say, this of... is actually one of the most realistic parts of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> like, they end up on the same flight together. Like, there's probably, granted, again, not a lot of flights, but somehow... <laughs> Even though, like, the flight's boarding or something, there was a seat on it, which back then, I guess, could happen. Less has people it, flew or whatever. It's very crazy. Has anybody ever been in first class? Is that what it's like at all? <laughs> like, is there any? Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, I flew, you know, I flew to Japan so much with our team. Um, we, we all got, like, status. And then they yeah, just had yeah. all... Like, we were on a double-decker plane, like, snakes on a plane. Right? Oh, that yeah. sounds so cool. And, uh, and yeah. pretty much our whole team took up both levels. And you're in those seats where it's, like, your own cubicle. And you could, like, lay all the way down. And the problem is, you don't really get to sleep because they keep fucking bothering you. Like, <laughs> Sir, we have hot fudge sundaes, and it's in this nice glass and shit. You get all these special treats in first class. You're back in coach. You get that shitty ass meal with a fucking tiny Twix or Kit Kat. Yeah. And yeah, it's like that. And then what you do knows what is realistic about it is he got there late. Everybody had already boarded. He had to get there quick. So he, there was only a first class ticket. There were two boarding doors. You know, you embark back and then, disembark yeah. from two different doors. First class goes mm-hmm. here. You don't really see people in coach uh, yeah. unless you board at the same time and you're like, you know, you're parallel to their line. Because right. the curtains are already shut, they got to go to the back. You go in the first class, right? Yeah, and if there was one one boarding entrance, it was left or right because you would board and board kind of midship, so to speak, and you know you would be wherever you turn based on the curtain. And yeah, and you sit there, you and it's like they keep coming up to you with shit. You know, like yeah, the, the hot towel thing is completely real. But I got those in coach as well, flying to Japan, only on the Japanese airlines though, not on the <laughs> American or United. But if which is I always flew. Japanese airlines. I always did JAL or I did uh I think it's A and A. So you get treated a lot better. I think you know our next so, my nice, my favorite flight was to Spain and and they brought us little glasses of wine and like little grapes and meats and cheeses on the way. This, and I was like, this is a great time. This is when the red hot chili peppers didn't break up. Right? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, You're we went and saw to- them in Spain. We, we saw them in Barcelona. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, got it. Oh, yeah, they got didn't it. break up. Yeah, <laughs> they were still together. Yes. Uh, when John, when you'll notice when John Frusciante leaves the band, they make sorry albums, and when he comes back, they make great albums. So there's something there with that guy. Yeah, he's, well, he's a good like musician. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, you know. Otherwise, it's just 35 songs about California that everybody's heard. <laughs> Instead of saying the word "yeah" or something, like, yeah, now, he uses California for his every. <laughs> Every song. Oh, Kelly. <laughs> yeah. Joe's losing his shit over there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. he hates Joe. Else to add chili peppers. Oh, what about the that? guy? What about the guy he bought the ticket from? He had the flock of seagulls here. <laughs> oh yeah, that guy. are you a fan? I can tell you are. <laughs> that was that very that Chris. Was that's funny. a Chris comment right there. <laughs> Um, I mean, he was making a nostalgia fi- like Adam Sandler was making a nostalgia film for himself because yeah. he missed a lot of those things from the 80s, clearly. Sure. And he brought them do. back. We all do. Yeah. Sure. Um, 
Andy, the, the <laughs> concerts, the concerts they have usually in Virginia Beach in like August or whatever, and they do them on the different piers, the different streets. Oh yeah, I went down the boardwalk. What was that called? It's like American Music Festival. Yeah, there's or the um beach. Um, was there's like the um there's the USO one they do every summer. Right, there's the various ones, and like I'm trying to think because um beach I was town at, or something. It's it's like, yeah, it's like Beach Town USA or something or whatever is like and part of the series or something. But I'm trying to think like oh um because last year when I went was like I went and saw Tonic. Not tonic. Was it tonic? Maybe I'm thinking, or somebody else. I don't know. One of those great '90s bands. Spot. I saw, you know, um, you know, whatever. But yeah, like they'll play at 31st Street there by Neptune. It, it was part yeah. of the Neptune Festival and all that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there's always different things. And yeah, I have the the uh, bigger stages like 17th, 10th, 31st. You know, there's like a couple. <laughs> bigger stages and yeah people- i think on the fifth street one you always had to pay for that one because i had to pay yeah one day i saw eddie money and warrant and yeah. then flock of seagulls a little later wow. and then i yeah. went down all the way to fifth street and that's yeah. where i get to saw my guy from the 80s billy idol mm-hmm. i had billy idol hair when i was a kid yeah. i had the blonde really blonde hair and my mom spike would spike it, it up yeah. like billy idol for me because I had, I was seven years old. Um, if Herschel was here, it would be a great time for him. He and I both had, I mean, we jammed it seven years old. Uh, Herschel's a little older, but I was seven years old. I got a boom box for my birthday and I got Rebel Yell. Great album. It's like a cassette tape, of, you know, it was like <clears throat> a group. She got me like 10, like she had done some Columbia House shit for my birthday. Uh, yeah. Got some tapes that I guess she wanted to hear, but I did get that Rebel Yell. And, uh, and I saw Billy Idol in this movie. I was like, that's my guy. And I finally got to see him in Virginia Beach at one of those concerts. Yeah. And this kind of re kicked off his music career a little bit, I think, you know, because, um, you know, he had this cameo. Then, like, he did a, he was on like an episode or two of like Viva La Bam a couple years later. And then, like, he had that album somewhere in between there, I want to say, that was great. And, you know, he had, he had kind of a little revival, you know, from some of this, I think. Now, what would you do if Billy Idol was on your plane and he helped you get the girl, you know? This is a guy who was... Uh, and then he uh, says, you know what? I'm going to tell those record executives about you. You're pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because he's that kind of stand-up guy. I wonder if he did. That's where we need a wedding singer part two. We got to see him opening for Billy Idol, you know. Right. And and then final warning, Robbie Hart, lead singer of Final Warning, and then Linda falling in love with him again. You know? Right. It should have been get him to the Greek. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Was it out to snow? Yeah. Actually, get him to the Greek was a spinoff of like forgetting Sarah Marshall or something like that, right? Some, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, it was. Uh, never mind. I oh, take really? it back. No. Yeah. Anyways. So, I mean, that's terrible in comparison. Anyways, that's the end of the movie? Does... Yeah, pretty much. Like, I, I don't have anything else. It's and... not the end of the movie. Does Glenn get an STD? <laughs> I don't think it is either. I don't think it's it is It's not either. the end of the movie. He gets married to Drew Barrymore is the end of the movie. Yeah. And the cameo Steve Buscemi comes end, back. Steve Buscemi is now the wedding singer. Yeah. And Killing also, it is, is I mean, like... Singer. yeah, Good for him. When he's I, on I the plane the and, and, you know, he... <laughs> He strums his guitar and sings a song to Drew Barrymore. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, that's a pretty solid scene. You know, it's the culmination of everything. I mean, first off, I just want to make it very clear that like romantic comedies and like, in fact, even like the most like will they, won't they scenarios uh, always leave regular guys like, I don't know. With the biggest shoes to fill on the planet. This goes from this movie (laughs) to Jim and Pam in the office. You know, I mean, like, like the the romantic gestures are 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 just so gigantic. They're they're so big that that there's nothing you can do. Claire and Phil Dunphy, give me a break here, folks. Like, but. 
but at the same time, he a comes lot in of them... there and he it's it's the song that he wrote like on the way to the airport. <laughs> yeah. And it's all like the things that like she had talked but it's all about. The like, things, yeah. Hey, you know, and you're in he... love. When you were in love, it flows. Everybody says, Andy, you and Sinister X, right? Yeah. The easiest songs are the ones like I woke up in the middle of the night with a dream and I and I wrote this song in maybe 15 minutes, right? Yeah. Yeah, the that's best songs it. come to you lightning in a bottle. You know, that's where it's from. When you're trying to get those album fillers, mm-hmm. that's when it that's when it's hard. Yeah. <laughs> like 15 minutes ago. I agree with you, Joe. I agree with you, Joe, that Hollywood makes it hard for us normal guys to even compare. Like, because now every girl is like, he didn't even have a plane flying in the sky with a banner. And then whenever I unrolled my towel at the beach, it didn't say, Will you marry me? It was, you know, he just got yeah. down on his knee and asked me. Can in I the just first say place I love when... Jim and Pam? And Jim was very realistic. Like, his gestures were never too big. And, and I don't know why you brought up Claire and Phil Dunphy. <laughs> Well, what's Claire and Phil alone. Duffy? What are we talking about? You didn't I, like whenever he did Clive? I don't even know where they're from. Uh, Modern Family. Oh, I don't watch that. It, it, it's, it's it's really, it, I didn't think I was going to like it either. And then one time it was on TV and I was doing the dishes. And I caught an episode and I was like, what the... F- this, this shit's really it's good. kind of up my alley. It is really And good. then accidentally got me roped in and now I watch it whenever it's mm-hmm. on. And But I mean, uh, the... the uh, man and wife of the show uh no i've caught a couple episodes and it's pretty good but I've... he does a, he, he's a very romantic dude he, he does big gestures for big for like events and things like that yeah, you know he's a big... but he's just oh. a very he's just he he puts on quite the spectacle when it's a birthday or yeah. uh mm-hmm. you know an anniversary or valentine's day or something he's and it's really funny all of it is yeah. again I'm not oh, doing it. can't put this shit on, dude. Come on, we have we're working forty hours a week. Yeah. What do you want from me? <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, that ties into this because at the wedding at the end, Steve Buscemi's wedding band is playing uh, Spandau Ballet. True, right? Yeah. And one of the big gestures Claire did for Phil was, she said, "I got a guy from the bass player from his favorite band, Spandau Ballet. It was Ed Norton <laughs> playing the bass player." And Bill is like, I have no idea who these people are. I don't know who the fan of Valley is. <laughs> and so he's like trying to pretend he's a fan. And then Edward yeah. finds him out. He goes, you're not a fan now. He just starts yelling at him. Yeah, it's yeah. really funny. It's, it is really Probably funny. the most 80s song of all of them. Right. Uh, Valley. It's actually, uh, uh, Claire Dunphy is uh, the heartthrob from, yeah. from Happy uh, Gilmore. Yeah. Happy Gilmore. <laughs> That's right. See, oh. Joe, good job. Yeah. So, yeah, dude, I guess I win by connecting Modern Family to this movie, a so game we've been that, playing uh, since the beginning that nobody knew about. Andy, can you sing some? Uh, can you sing some True by Spandau Ballet? You hit some high notes earlier. No, Let's I, I, I mean, I probably songs today. I probably could, but I don't know the words enough other than you know. <laughs> well, your band yeah. members. Uh, my favorite thing. Out. My favorite thing is that. Andy specifically chose this movie so he could show off his guitar skills, yeah. CD, which is <laughs> no, I awesome. You know, I would have picked, uh, you know, star. yeah, Rockstar with Mark Wahlberg, you know, okay. <laughs> but no. or, or Boogie Nights with Mark Wahlberg. Yeah, well, you know, um, that's showing off a different rock star. But yeah. <laughs> oh I'm just God. surprised that out of all of the movies to choose from, this was the one, though, like. Totally caught me off guard. No, it was yeah. a toss up between this and uh, You've Got Mail, but <laughs> I decided not to give Tom Hanks the, the nod. Yeah, I was surprised oh, you picked man, this. Dude, I would have probably gone crazy on a Tom Hanks movie. Yeah, I, I probably would have too, enjoyed then. it. Is that yeah. the one where they he met he met Meg Ryan because he went uh, to the hospital true. and he had like poison now. ivy in his ass? No, no, that was the one, uh, yeah, you know, you mail. <laughs> where, where, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is that the one? <laughs> yeah. Nah, I don't know. No, where they Is make uh, meeting me? people on the internet not creepy. <laughs> yes, yes, that is true. You know, but um, uh, any other notes or anything else we missed from the movie? No, I just want to say, like, as much as I didn't like this movie, the airplane scene was my favorite. Yeah, that's great. Scene, even with the like, nobody the, talks to Billy Idol that way. Even with the trope <laughs> where like they're waiting for the answer and they're all huddled all together waiting to see what was going to happen like i loved all that that whole scene yeah that was pretty when, adorable i i really i i i laugh out loud uh in in 
all the time. And anytime Billy Idol's brought up, a buddy of mine always says it. Billy Idol gets it. But when uh, Billy Idol's like, he uh, doesn't even love her. He loves objects yeah. and women. And he treats women like uh, and, and, their <laughs> possessions. Yeah, yeah. Something I can't even remember. And yeah. Adam Sanders like, See, Billy Idol gets it. Yeah. <laughs> Why doesn't she? It was and really enjoyable. It's 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 really funny. Billy Idol, I thought, played a pretty good cut up in that, and the whole time. He made a really good Billy Idol. <laughs> <laughs> Billy Idol did a nice job playing himself. <laughs> he did. Well, he wasn't like super awkward. Like sometimes you get celebrities yeah, and yeah. shit, and they, and they and you can just tell they're they're not where they belong. Yeah. 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 You know. He was at home, yes. Billy Idol yeah. was having, he had he fun did a very that. good job of having, yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I bet being on set with Adam Sandler and most of those dudes is kind of fun because he does have yeah. really funny guys in his movies that are just there for like maybe just a day. <laughs> right. You know, Kevin Nealon popping in. Yeah, depending uh, on what day. You know, I think Kevin Nealon hangs out the whole time and helps him. Yeah, probably. probably. Um, he does things, says, hey, let's put this here, put that there, things like that. Uh, yeah. Um, so damn funny He's, all the time. He says he doesn't want to do too much. Kevin Nealon says, I don't want a big part in any of these movies. He said he's happy with what he does. Yeah, but he wants to hang out. I, I saw like one of his podcasts, I guess, where he hikes with people. <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> like John Lovitz in there and stuff. Like it, his whole thing in the movie was just that little scene. <laughs> it was great. That had nothing to do with, I mean, like. We, yeah, we never I see guess, him, like, guess, wedding There's no point anywhere. of him. Yeah, he never wedding sees again. And it doesn't really... We already kind of get the idea from the other scenes with, like, the cake eating, the, the, the trying the wedding dresses on, um, the bouquets, all that stuff. Like, we see them already getting a relationship. We don't need to see them sit down in an auditorium no. and listen to John Lovett. Lovett. Yeah. Oh, I guess it does allow us to see him sing his own song. I still do the John Lovett shimmy. Oh, Let me see a wedding DJ <laughs> move and shake like this. I do that. I still do that. See shimmy. a DJ. I feel like this this movie was just a like like Adam Sandler had all these bits that he wanted to do, <laughs> and he had to figure out a way to Work like kind of make it into something. So he yeah. just made this up, and he was like, "I guess we could make it a love story." Because he probably thought the idea of like a br heartbroken wedding singer was really hilarious. <laughs> and he's like, but how do I tie that in? Mm -hmm. And so like all these bits just became a movie by almost accident. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, and it's back in the, in the golden age of comedies back in the day, you know, where the ideal comedy runtime is about 90 minutes. Mm -hmm. You know, this isn't the Judd Apatow, like, three hours of um you know what, set pieces uh whatever the one with paul rudd and like so this is 40 or whatever the fuck that yeah. one was or something that's like way too long it's like come on what are we doing like there's 90 minutes of funny and then there's 45 minutes of filler that didn't it's 45 minutes of leslie mann and her fucking voice <laughs> and complaining her thing i'm like holy fuck yeah. stop yeah <laughs> Solid, yes. I'm She's, she plays that person in every movie. Yeah. Yeah. She goes off on that whiny rant, and you're just like, you're right. I wouldn't want to be married to you. And Judd's just taking that out on his movies. Like, you know, I'll put that in my movie. He goes, every time you talk to me, I'm just going to record it and put it in a movie. <laughs> yeah. I feel that's how she talks all the yeah. time to him. Yeah. But all right. So then that leaves us to. The homework of uh we'll go to the top five first and i said uh in honor of billy idol's cameo go with uh top five favorite uh musician cameos in movies you know not necessarily in a, a music musical role per se so they didn't have to be be like you know like billy idol being billy idol playing <laughs> you know just the musician convenient. shows up in the you know as an actor of some sort in the movie. So, uh, so we'll start with Chris and uh, you can give me your rundown. Right. I've got like 12. No. Five and that's it. Just yeah. do. We're not here all day all listening to you talk about who you love in movies. Be quiet, Joe. You're from Kansas. 
<laughs> my number five oh. is uh, there's three for number five. Oh. I hate you. No, we're not uh, that's all you get. You only get five. To, you only get to name five people. And you then, say five names. I'm just, I'm no. muting. No, I I'm I'm muting you after five <laughs> names. <laughs> It's not. Well, I would allow it. It's it's I'm not the it's, host. Uh, it's a pretty good one though. Yeah. Alice in Chains, Soundgarden, and Pearl Jam in the movie Singles. Very good. Yeah. My number four is Billy Idol in The Wedding Singer. Yeah. Good. My number three is Jack White and Walk Hard, Dewey Cox. Mm. <laughs> My number two is Gene Simmons and Extract. <laughs> <laughs> and my number one is Alice Cooper, Wayne's World. Nice. Nice. You're good. Awesome stuff. All right. Let's go, Joe. All righty. <clears throat> In no particular order here, mm -hmm. but uh, I also chose uh, Jack White and Dewey Cox. Nice. Uh, I have uh, Jeff Healy and Roadhouse. <laughs> Fuck yeah, man. Great. Uh, Tom Jones in Mars Attacks. <laughs> yep. uh, very obvious for people uh, our age that, uh, yeah, for sure, dude. David Bowie in uh, Zoolander. Oh. And then uh, my last one is uh, Neil Diamond in Saving Silverman. Nice. So it's it's a solid lineup. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, what's that? Uh, what's that? Uh, Mars Attacks was on TV like randomly like two or three weeks ago, yeah. and I caught just like a little bit of it. And I was like, "Son of a bitch!" <laughs> and I was like, "That's a good ass <laughs> call out." <laughs> Tom yeah. Jones showing up in there, dude. <laughs> yep. What a crazy movie! Like everybody was in that thing. Everybody was in that movie. So nuts. And Jack it's, Nicholson twice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's yeah. Pierce Brosnan. Got, yeah. I mean, everybody's in uh, that. Yeah. Sarah Jessica Parker. When she was still hot. Yeah. It's crazy how many people are in that. Was she hot ever? Yeah. yeah. Was there a period there? A little Pretty pony. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Surf and turf. You guys, and then I'll read Herschel's, and then I'll give you mine. I guess I'll oh, go. Oh, yeah, go first. Sorry. All right. Uh, <laughs> starting with number five, uh, Exhibit as Mike and Eight Mile. Number four is uh, Snoop Dogg as Huggy Bear and Starsky and Hutch. I don't know if these count. Yeah, that counts. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, number three is uh, Dr. Dre as Paul in Training Day. And then I love how when when bits work out. <laughs> uh, number two is Anthony Kiedis in, as Tone in a Point Break. <laughs> and uh, number one is Flea as Needles in Back to the Future 2. Nice. I was so like, like I, I got it got even more red hot chili peppers content yeah, yeah. in here. <laughs> I was like, was he gonna go all like too. 90s rappers? Because that would have been great yeah. too. <laughs> I wrote those down. I put Anthony Kiedis uh point break and i was like i wonder if adam's going to mention Flea, <laughs> if anybody will mention Flea would. And back to the future back to the future two or one or three two, two and three two yeah oh, all right man. it was part of the the gang or whatever wasn't he yeah and two he was the one who was firing him on the tv or got him in trouble on the tv as well <laughs> mm -hmm. needles i remember that it was <laughs> point breaks a good one though shot himself in the foot <laughs> okay you guys ready yep all right i figured i'd start with another adam sandler ozzy osbourne at the end of little nicky all right <laughs> um and then i did re i got so excited for p diddy and get him to the greek i just kept that in there i'd already mm -hmm. yelled it out like i love that Scene it was great. Fucking amazing. So it's just like Insane. the carpet is crazy on the walls, whatever. Um, <laughs> and then I have um, Keith Richards plays Captain Jack's dad in the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. Um, and then from Fern Gully, the Goanna, the giant lizard thing, sings and it's a uh, tone lock. 
Um, <laughs> and that's just always stuck in my head. Um, and then because I was going straight from memory and I did not want to go to the Google at all, the only other thing I could think of was um, a progressive commercial and they got three fifths of in sync. <laughs> 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 and the person doesn't want insurance and she says read the room and the kicks the NSYNC boys who started to sing right. out so those were mine <laughs> I'm glad they were so different than what you guys thought yeah. it's good stuff that's All good right. stuff All right. on uh, Herschel's list he has uh, two for in the doors uh, John Des Densmore and Billy Idol in Die Another Day, Madonna and Repo Man, uh, The Circle mm -hmm. Jerks and Miami Vice uh, from TV, and then as well as Suicidal Tendencies is what he had on his list. And then my list, I went to uh, number five. I had uh, Lars Ulrich from Metallica was in Get Him, from the, Get Him to the Greek. Then I had Billy Idol from the wedding singer obviously <laughs> um ozzy osborne and little nicky was great um i put flea from baby driver no he was also in that mm -hmm. and then i and the real reason i also wanted to do this was to mention uh the charlie sheen classic chase with henry rollins yeah <laughs> so <laughs> yeah he was good in that yeah yeah Everybody's list was solid this time. Yeah, for sure. I like there was some overlap too, you know. Yeah. Billy um, Idol and the... I was gonna kill did anybody the did anybody <laughs> think of uh meatloaf for either uh, uh, Tenacious D or Wayne's World? Right. Or Fight or, Club. Uh, or Fight Club. Fight Club. Yeah. Fight Club. Yeah. Well, um honestly, if you wanted to keep it in like the vein of like Adam Sandler, you could have said Mariah Carey and uh Don't Mess with the Zohan. Uh, um <laughs> No, Joe, what I was thinking about, because uh, was that sh that movie, uh, Pop Star, Never Stop, Never Stopping? Never Stop, Stop. Yeah. I Mariah love Carey, that movie. I was going to put Mariah Carey for her scene where she's like, I mean, I like that he's humble. Like me, I'm humble. I'm like the most humble person I know. <laughs> <laughs> I had thought of um, Ariana Grande in the, the, the Asteroid movie. The Asteroid movie. I don't remember what the movie was called now all of a sudden. But with Leon Leonardo DiCaprio and Jennifer Lawrence and oh. you know what I'm talking about at all? No. Meryl Streep's the president. Up. Yeah, don't look up. Don't look up. Oh, that that thing. I didn't I didn't I haven't seen that yet. I saw some of it and I couldn't watch it. <laughs> it's horrible. I uh <laughs> I have not <laughs> seen that. I enjoyed it. I did uh um I mean I had other people on my list and stuff like um David Grohl and yeah. uh to pick a destiny playing Satan. Yeah. Right? Uh, yeah, that was that was really awesome. Uh, we're breaking anyway. our we're breaking our rules that we were yelling at yep. us about. We, I apologize for that and I realized I did it and I, no, let's get on. Let's get on with the show. Yeah. The show needs to start. next. Yeah. All right. Um the recasts. Oh yeah. I'll uh, I'll go first give you my recast um so i recast robbie hart will be played by uh rami malik mm -hmm. you know who did uh the bohemian rhapsody and you know mr robot and you know him for various things need for speed and all that kind of great stuff um i recast julia as rachel mcadams <laughs> uh, i recast andy as troy garrity from Ballers. I thought that'd be a good, uh, you know. And then for the Carl Urban, I think it'd be funny to make him George. Like, I think it'd be fun <laughs> just to put him in drag. Like, you know, something like funny, in the yeah. most like <laughs> oddball Paul or Carl Urban role would be, you know, let's make him George. So they'll, uh, we'll go surf and turf next. We'll just do reverse order, basically. Oh, I guess it's me then. Um, yeah. Well, either one. Either <laughs> square. So. Uh, so I replaced Adam Sandler with Joe Keery, who is one of the lead actors in uh, Stranger Things. Okay. Okay. Um, I replaced Drew Barrymore with Kiersey Clemens, 
who is a young actress she uh was um the love interest of flash in the justice league movie very briefly she's been in a couple other little things but she's been in some smaller roles i just remembered her face her face looks very similar like has a little baby doll look look like uh drew um i made sammy the limo driver friend um zach efron so yeah, that's a good cast. And then I wanted Carl Urban to be um, Robbie's brother-in-law. Andy, yeah, I think right. It's yeah, it should be Andy. Frank Severo. That works. Cool. I like it. Cool. With his hair done similar. Right. <laughs> it's such a off. it's such a cool like, haircut. I think just... he could play like just a slightly douchier older friend who yeah. pretends to be more confident than he is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Adam, all right. I didn't uh, put too much thought into this, but uh, I got Robbie. I chose. So <laughs> I, I I went with Michael Sarah. I went uh, Julia. I went with Emmy Rossum. Who's that? She's from a. Uh, I can't think of the name. I know her name. Mm-hmm. Of the the, the the. I mean. R O S. What's the name? Fiona Gallagher in the television series Shameless. Yeah, Shameless. The girl from Shameless. Yes. And then uh, Julia's sister Holly. I went with Zoe Deschanel, and okay. then. Uh, Carl Urban, I cast it as Glenn, the uh, fiance of Julia. Okay, that's fun. I thought about that. Yeah, I was yeah, like, I, I didn't, I didn't put the craziest thought into it this time. Sure, sure. Yeah, you know, that's a good the part about Carl Urban, though. He's good anyway. Yeah, yeah. You just throw him anywhere, yeah. and he's it's gonna yeah. elevate the movie. Your exactly. recast was okay. <laughs> <laughs> Joe. All righty. So uh, I picked. Uh, to play the part of Glenn, I picked a Nick Kroll. <laughs> nice. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. He could just be kind of like a real douchey kind of guy. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, and then um, I want to, I just want to, I'm just going to drop two names. Uh, the, I recast Robbie and Julia at the same time. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I kind of have this thing going here. So I'll drop them both at the same time. Uh, the side I wanted to name. A Hollywood it couple, <laughs> somebody that's in the news, somebody J Lo and Ben Affleck been in a band. Oh. Somebody's already been in a band. Spit it out. I will tell you right now. <laughs> Robbie and Julia will be played by the Hollywood it couple, Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. I've been in the news, that's for sure. Let's that's see, yeah, let's see, him. let's see the acting oh, chops of two right people right. that absolutely hate each other, fall in love. Right. <laughs> one will shit in your bed, the other yep. one will drink himself to death of, of your entire family, mm. uh, or whatever. I have no idea. Um, and then Carl Urban, I wanted him to be uh, David, the groom's brother. Mm. Uh, Steve Buscemi's character. Yeah. Yeah, that's fun. Show up, be a little drunk, and at the end, get a get a get a song at the end to make us feel good about it. Right. Good. That's nice it, man. Carl Urban Redemption, if you will. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. That was also hey. okay. Um, <laughs> of course, I uh, I recast Julia as Anna Ferris. They seem like similar people. Yeah. Uh, Robbie Hart is Seth MacFarlane. Okay. And as Sammy the limo driver, Patrick Wilson. Nice. Yeah. Because he was a limo driver in Stretch. And Carl Urban's going to be Glenn. They kind of look alike, too. So Yeah. He could do that. You know. I like that list. Mm-hmm. I like it. I like it. All right. So, the only, well, a few things left to do, but to put a bow on this one, we'll give our ratings. Um, we'll start with Joe. It's out of 10, right? Yep, out of 10 Dixie Cups. (sighs) 6.5. I 
six and a half. Okay. It's fair. I mean, yeah, it's 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 a rom com, man. It's a Sandler flick too. You know mm-hmm. what you get into? Six and a half. It's not gonna blow your mind, not changing the world. Mm-hmm. Lucky it didn't rate lower because you're a Sandler flick. But like I said mm-hmm. earlier, if there's been if this if this had been damn near any other Adam Sandler movie, I probably would have dinged it just for being an Adam Sandler movie. <laughs> sure. This one is I, I find to be still kind of fun still kind of fun and i can see like a lot of people still really really like a lot of people really liked it back then too by the way i mean it was a very popular movie yeah i was in made i was budget it was in 98 i i graduated in 01 so this is like my sophomore year or something like that freshman year like this movie was friggin huge for teenagers shit to take their to their girl with their girlfriends and stuff and I'm sure do things that they didn't want to even talk to their parents about. Right. You know, <laughs> so. Yeah, six and a half. It's a good, it's a good rating. Let's go uh, Sabrina and Adam. You first. Um, you know, I think my issue with rom-coms is that it took me like 400 years to break Sabrina down. <laughs> To finally marry me, so the ice queen. I so, basically asked you. So, <laughs> so, Man. so the fact that these people are falling in love, like, doesn't vibe with me. But in all seriousness, uh, yeah, I'm not a big fan of rom coms. I'm a big fan of Adam Sandler. Um, this one was all right, but I, I wasn't looking forward to watching it. I'm giving it a. I'll Just give it a it. six point oh. Six. A solid a six. six. Solid six. All right. All right. All right. So like I said earlier at the very beginning of this, I rate these movies based on would I recommend it <laughs> and would I sure. watch it again? Right. The standard, you know, rating makes sense. So taking that in consideration, <clears throat> I think this is a solid 4.5. <laughs> really? Jeez. <laughs> because on a scale of one to, Like, listen. <laughs> On a scale of one to ten, five is neutral, right? Five is right. I don't give a hell of like I have no sure, feelings. Sure, yeah, take it. it or leave it. Yeah, absolutely. That's, I yeah. do have feelings towards this, <laughs> <laughs> but they're not so terrible that I like. You don't want to give it a two, but no, yeah. it's niche enough that it might be something that I could like. I can reference it still. Like sure. Julia Gouli is fun to say. It's got right. a couple like good lines or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. The underdog stuff. There's there's like a couple of good lines that are repeatable, which mm-hmm. make me not just hate it. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, like I'm unless it's like very like situational was the only way I would be like you need to watch the wedding singer. I will never tell <laughs> someone they need to watch the wedding singer. Probably. So four point five. No, no. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll bring it back around with Chris. Feelings are hurt over there. <laughs> <Back on> the... <laughs> yeah, hey, if, it's like, if people are commenting on our show, everybody would rail against Sabrina and all of her ratings for <laughs> and, her re- <laughs> and her reasons for it. They would be like, "Can you replace her? Is there somebody for season two you could get?" <laughs> um, uh, or in season two, we will so stand by all of our viewers, all of our like two twenty yeah. zero. You're, now you're hitting you're like Adam. 60 right. plays on one, um, of our, one a couple episodes i think i don't know i grew up yeah. in the 80s and i know you guys didn't <laughs> so i can remember the years of the 80s 81 yeah. through um and i started high school in 91 and yeah. that was whenever the cast of Adam david spade and you know those guys Saturday Night Live, and it sounded used bad. To come to school day and talk about it mm-hmm. and uh Joe, what are you doing? Uh, your sound was getting weird. There it was I don't know. Mine is. Yeah, it was. Yeah. yeah, it was like it was like. I heard nothing. Filters and then were talk changed. About it was it. very strange. It was weird. Which yeah. I enjoyed. Right. Not really being able to listen to. Yeah, Chris. we're just gonna let it happen. It but... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but Joe kept making weird yeah. waves. <laughs> you remember this? I'm the reason people watch this show. Those four people. Mm-hmm. All right. It's not Joe's Kansas flag. Could be though. It's a great flag. But, uh, this was uh 
my high school era, these guys, this is where I fell in love with Adam Sandler and David Spade mm-hmm. and Chris Rock. And they are considered probably the worst cast that whole. Really? They're, yeah, by people who are cynical because maybe because they hate Adam Sandler movies now. I, mean, those, or something. I was like some of the, I think the, that 90s some era the, was like the golden era almost. Like, yeah. I mean, granted, you're coming off of the 80s with some of the great, like the Ackroyd you know well you well, had phil hartman on this cast too people yeah, forget yeah. about phil hartman and dana right. carvey and dennis yeah, miller and so kevin many good and all that back then yeah this is a gold so age. i fell in love with him and then no oh, i found out okay this guy's got a billy madison movie out i'm gonna watch it um and then he does happy gilmore where he tries to make golf cool yeah to where actually people started golfing yeah um and then he comes out with this movie which made him a bankable star because he uh reached another demographic with like women because usually it was uh if you ever listen to his cds yeah it's it's, it's a guys, very specific yeah. Like, demographic yeah. there yeah um but chris rock has said the funniest person he knows is adam sandler so i love adam Same sandler there. this movie is great i uh give it a solid eight dixie cups oh man because it hits every point that needs to be hit <laughs> in a movie stupid comedy uh nostalgic jokes that fit a time period um, there are things, you know, say like Titanic, you know, are they going to let a poor person really eat with them? No, have a that doesn't fit. Uh, what other movies did you say came out in this year? Uh, well, Water Somehow Boy. made more money, but Doc, this one for Google, me is a solid eight. Godzilla, the first rush hour, which was, you know, fun. Ooh, I love that movie. Yeah. Speaking of which, I was on a, uh, June Tower. Spec- is that, um, <laughs> I was on an inspection team where a couple of our, the two guys who did the same, one was a black guy, one was a Chinese guy. And we called them, they always inspected the, the same. We called them rush hour. That was <laughs> oh, shit, man. It's... <laughs> man you know, that I've seen there. other films based on the eighties that I enjoyed. They might well, not be as accurate as this one was. But... <laughs> yeah, this is i uh... I'm thinking and of yeah. was it hot tub time machine. Yeah, it's not that, quite as the same '80s. I mean, sure they it's not the same. They highlight the the Ski anguish, club. the anguish of, you, uh, of being Cleveland fan with with John Elway's drive and all that. But you know, Sabrina, <laughs> I would probably give that movie a higher rating than this one. I liked yeah. Hot Tub Time Machine. <laughs> I just don't like. I think Craig Robinson always needs a fucking keyboard in every movie and every show he's ever been in, and commercial and, and yeah. Pizza Hut commercial. I mean, he's doing that. Too. It's yeah. part of his stand up. Like his whole stand up is with the keyboard so don't touch my dark though man i love that yeah i give it a (laughs) solid eight and i definitely i give it an eight as well um you know rewind it had been a while since i watched it but i I do own the dvd it was like one of the early dvds i bought because i remember enjoying this movie a lot back in the day i still love grow old with you as a as a great love ballad (laughs) the, the lyrics stand true um it's a, good it's a fun movie. It's a good, yeah. It's a good song. It's a, it's a, it's a fun movie. You know, um, you know, I Sandler originals that are fun. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's, uh, you know, to me, you know, there's not much not to like about it. I <laughs> you know, so yeah, I'll watch yeah. anything he puts out. Will I watch Jack and Jill again? Probably not. But maybe <laughs> I'll say, hey, let me give it another chance in ten years. Maybe. Um, I can't watch That's My Boy, even though he's got Sandberg in it, which I love. But yeah. I didn't love the movie. Yeah. I, just, I haven't I watched watch as it. much of his more recent stuff, but I mean, back then, yeah, I was like, oh, new Adam Sandler movie. Let's go out and see it in theaters. Or you know, I really do let's like get it from That's the My Boy. You know? <laughs> and I, really, I really do like That's My Boy. It's so friggin' stupid that I can't, I can't get enough of it. It's the voice, I think, that he does is what bothers and me that, that, yeah, that, that crazy uncle donnie he had on that cd yeah <laughs> that was it that's who he was doing <laughs> you know and he's doing that voice and i just remember that skit being so that was over the we used to love that funny one. and i <laughs> and andy you know how much i love that that that, that was stupid, a great that bit, yeah. stupid bit it was so dumb yeah, the, the uh, are we going to fish? Got or... more balls in the fucking Celtics locker room. Yeah. Yeah. Are, are we going to fish? Or are we going to put our tampons in? <laughs> He's so, How about this? Only women count. <laughs> He's so stupid, and I and I, when yeah, that movie made me just 
Yeah. Go back the and listen to uh, crazy young Donnie. Yeah. Go back and listen to Do It for Mama. No. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, that was that was a long running joke of my friends for a long time, man. You know Mama. all those all those old albums that he had were. We're all the laughing you. Crazy over the top. <laughs> yeah. The oh, goat. God. Everybody remembers the goat. <laughs> Gay, gay robot fucking, came from a sound yeah. bit, right? Yeah, Maybe. gay robots on his last CD, I think. Yeah, one of my I guess favorite where, uh, shorts on the internet YouTube. of all time. Early yeah. YouTube, yeah, short MySpace days. Nick Swartz and yeah, <laughs> right. Gay robot was on my top friends list for a long time. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> you became gay because someone. <laughs> Spilled Scientist that was building him spilled, spilled the wine, wine cooler, cooler on his circuit board. <laughs> I think I remember you actually making me listen to that one. Like that, I discovered that because Adam played it for me like ten years ago. I'm crying it now. That's how you knew you should marry that man. All right, what's next? I, was it inappropriate when you asked Ivan for the wrestling team to wrestle his balls into your mouth? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I think that's inappropriate. <laughs> so is Nick Swartzen still funny? Is that the... I don't loved, know, Remember, man. we loved his stand-up when he first came out doing those little 30-minute mm. Comedy Central things. Mm. Yeah. Oh, uh, I st- I, I've been watching... Old Reno 911 for like the past like month and a half. <laughs> and when he pops up in there, I'm just like it's always great. Let's let's wrap this up. Oh yeah, yeah. let's anyway. Um, I mean that one later. My portion of the show, we got the our, the next movie, the the wheel, and you know, so yeah, I'll let's turn it over it. to uh to Adam for the rest of the festivities uh, and we'll move it up straight to you sabrina tell us your category and which movie you ended up choosing all right so i had comedy in the 80s so i tried to go about this in a way because like is pointed out all the time i'm not from the 80s so mm. <laughs> i was born it never comes up oddly enough here yeah <laughs> <laughs> So I tried to remember movies without Googling um, what I could remember from my childhood that I would watch. And then I looked them up afterwards to figure out what was actually from the 80s. Yeah. And I want to start with like what I'm not going to make you guys watch, <laughs> which is I'm not going to make you watch uh, Look Who's Talking. Mm. I'm not going to make you watch Three Men and a Baby. Or adventures in babysitting. Or I, would, uh, I would really like adventures babysitting. Honey, I shrunk the kids. Oh, come on. You'll never go wrong with Elizabeth Shue with this group, all right? It's true. It's I true. just want to show you where my head is at. Cleveland lady. She's great. <laughs> um, and then I was going to choose Ernest Goes to Camp. However, I have it on you blue. cannot stream it anywhere. I have it on Blu-ray. Just come over. I I we'll have a watch be. party. Yeah. Do a and live pod. So because it's not readily available, <laughs> I am going with Spaceballs. Oh, I feel like... Oh, shit. I just, I just watched it last week. I I, like, I, 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 how does that always happen? Like, Chris, I'm like, really happy. The next movie. I oh, love I just watched this movie. <laughs> I love this movie. I'm over so parodies. This is probably hmm. the closest I'm going to come to match your sense of humors yeah. so um some of Mel oh. brooks probably best work really. no oh. don't be dumb andy <laughs> do you guys want to know the top five that i yeah. want you to do i have to yeah All absolutely right. so i want you to list for me your top five sci-fi and or fantasy gadgets or weapons okay okay like it, like it. It's not realistic. Just like, mm-hmm. yes, mm-hmm. you got this. I like it. Yep. We'll get some really fun stuff out of that, hopefully. Oh, man. The worst thing is my mind's already going on this. I know. 
Let's well, get the yeah, Leonard Part did. Seven uh, references going. No, part Six references. <laughs> it's a broad enough thing. I'm pretty like sure. Like I want to, I want to blurt out stuff already. Yeah. A- so. Andy, were you comedy '90s? I was uh, '90s free for all. Oh, free for okay. Yeah. I just want to make sure this list is up to date. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Looks Who's like next. It. Who's choosing or <coughs> following it? Sabrina? I'm next. Is it Chris? Okay. Chris then Joe, I think is how it goes. Take your word on it. Yeah. We're getting we're getting to the end, guys. Yeah. Are we supposed to mix in? Well, I guess we'll have to mix in a a Carl Urban classic or something to once we close out at some point, right? Oh yeah. I guess done that at the end of the cycle. Maybe like the uh the the last episode when we've gone through all the uh the Donald. pie, we put our names on the pie, and then it's just any Carl Urban movie you want. Yeah, and that'll be whoever gets okay. the whoever lands on gets to pick whoever, Carl whoever's Urban name on the pie, get you know, like yeah. Adam or yeah, yeah. Whatever. Or we should just watch Dread. Yeah, <laughs> we could do that Which, too. By the way, yeah, you can't I mean, go wrong. Whatever. I don't know. Will. Eighth time this week. Yeah. <laughs> I know, like, and we can all bitch about how they still need to do that sequel. Which they were yeah. gonna do, yeah. Or comes back again. The early so this is whenever they're. This is I, what I don't like about horror in these years. Here is uh, they they actually thought they were really scaring people with all their little jump scare things that they do. Yeah, like, the the jump scare was born basically what in the an late eyeball nineties coming out of, of somebody's head. Which yeah. So ne- next season, I'm gonna add. Sci-fi. To yeah, well, act- we can probably the review the uh, the categories, I guess. Yeah, I'm going to add sci-fi to the action category, and I'm going <clears> to <throat> add thriller to the horror category, because I don't like horror. <laughs> what do you, what do you, a horror, like a uh, gory stuff? Category. Anything scary. Like, if you put, like, seven in there, I think that's scary. Yeah, yeah. I had yeah, nightmares yeah. after that. You know, um, right. Along Came a Spider. Um, cable Ooh, that's why scary. I, that's why thrillers and horror should go together. Yeah, and then thriller the, suspense. I think it is like. Yeah, so what, what, what years do you have? Two thousand, two thousand nine. Yeah, that's why I write this down so that I. So it's half of no. the Saw series, I think. <laughs> this is the stuff. Yeah, it's a... they were trying to scare me. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for joining. Uh. Say bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.